What are you guys calling? Josh okay, we are Josh. we are live. At least I think we're live. Been having technical difficulties. Launched the broadcast and let me ask you, it you did, are not part of it, the LM, are you? It did not work out so well. But let's let's see if the second try works. Trying on a different phone now. Who is tuned in? If you're tuned in, can you please let me know whether you can hear me and see me all right? Not that I want you to see me. Let's flip the camera around. Now you can see the action. And hopefully uh, I get some confirmation that that you can see and hear all right. I'm, I'm on a different phone now, so hopefully that resolves the connection issues. The My phone overheated and was having connection issues, but let's just put that all aside. We are in Tahunga on Foothill Boulevard by Lowell Avenue in the city of Los Angeles, but just barely the northeast part of LA in the Crescenta Valley where we have supporters of President Donald Trump gathered on one side of the street and apparently no counter protesters gathered on the other side of the street as there was last week and as was detailed by a man I was just interviewing. LAPD officers here in riot gear nonetheless. And let's see if we can go continue that interview especially for those of you who weren't tuned in when I was interviewing the man who was, who was uh, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, who was describing what was happening last week. Let's go back to him as I wind my way around the crowd through the parking lot here. Oh, I thought I could get out there. Apparently not. Here's a driveway. How'd it do it? <laughs> a little humor here from bystanders. Actually, I don't know if he's a bystander. And we're back, and let's see if we can redo that interview. Sir. Sir. This way, this way. I, I'm, I'm back with a better connection. You want to let everyone know who's tuned in, what happened last week, and uh, what brings you out here today? Uh, sure. What I, think, what I know last week was there was a lot, of, a lot of Black Lives Matter, Antifa across the street last week. Uh, right, they were they were coming out to the to the police cars that were patrolling in the middle. Uh, uh, they were they were getting mighty pushy on the police, getting pushy. They, had, they mixed it up at the other end, and uh, we're we're all here because we love our country, because we're patriots, and uh, we're against Black Lives Matter and Antifa because they're communist organizations. Uh, they're the heads are, com are are actually Marxists, and and to keep uh, uh, communism out of the United States is a good thing. No socialism, no. Socialism eventually leads to communism. So we don't need that in the United States. We need our freedom. We need our freedom to uh, live, survive. Uh, and uh, we don't need we don't need oppression like comes with socialism or, or communism. So I'm running out of voice here. So it's a, it's all right. There are other people I think we could talk to. Yeah. yeah. And but, uh, yeah, I'm a patriot. I want I want the, what's best for the country. I want what's best for my kids and their and their grandkids. I got a, I got a grandchild. Uh, I want want what's best for him. And it's communism, socialism is not what's best for him. Freedom, capitalism is is uh, uh, done good for 240 years, and it'll do good for another 240. So praise the Lord, Amen. Turn out the lights. This party over. All right, thank you. Let's see if, uh, if anyone else wants to come on. But first, uh, here's Annabelle. Hi. Yeah, I just talked to two people and they thought that we were connected to Antifa or BLM. And I made it straight that, you know, we are reporters out here. And maybe they want to explain what happened to them because they told me that BLM surrounded their house 
so Who, let's find are they, They're down this way? Yes. Do you have my phone, by the way? Yes. All right. Sounds good. So we're walking on Foothill Boulevard. Right along the, the police line. You can see a Gadsden flag, Trump flag. Officers out here in riot gear, but at least for now, no counter protester presence. But we can get more of a description about what happened last week involving counter protesters and the police. Is anybody here interested? We are on a live stream to express what brought you out here. No? All right, I don't. We are supporting Trump and our police Sir, do you want to come on camera or no? Let me put my mask on before I come. Okay. okay. Because I'm worried about those guys. I don't want them to know. All right, it looks like one of the men that uh, Annabelle is speaking with is come on right now. No, 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 but you want to make people of this uncomfortable. Yes. I feel kind of comfortable because I watch your videos. I'll be following do, you. Do you want to come on? I'll yes. come on for a few All minutes. Right. You ask me questions, whatever you want to ask me. All right. So uh, what, if you are on the driveway, we can stand yeah, here. Yeah, let's stand. The cops will actually let's, tell us go home if we do that. Let's stand right here. All right, what, what brings you out to the rally today? As you can see, all the flags, we are here supporting our country, our dear President Trump, uh, to uh, win against the communism. Because on the other side, there's not that many that are fighting, they, they want to bring this country down. They're burning our flag, they don't respect us. Trump is the only president that is going to save us, get yeah. us out of this mess. Not only is going to save us, he's going to save the whole yeah, world. That is what I believe in. And that's why we are fighting for him. How, how so? When you say save the world, how, how so? He's going to save us from, uh, if you have heard about deep state, the corruption, the child trafficking, which is happening all over the world, as you know. These are a few things. Uh, that's all I can say for now. Uh, I don't want to be on the camera for too long, by the way. Understandable. Uh, it's a long discussion, but uh, most people are waking up. They know what is going on. What so, about what about here locally? Any any issues that the crowd here is concerned about? The issues on there. People here are only concerned when BLM shows up and tries to actually agitate them and create some chaos, which has happened yeah. the last couple of weeks. But luckily, they were told not to show up this week. We are here peacefully uh, demonstrating for Trump. That's all we are doing. We want Trump for another four more terms, not four more years. Four more terms? Yes. But that would involve a constitutional no, no, no. amendment. His right? legacy will continue for more terms, if you understand. Oh, that. so so maybe Ivanka, maybe whoever, Junior, whoever maybe, can right. continue his honesty and uh, bring all the evil and fake news and all that bad stuff down, because we want to hear reality. We are tired of listening to fake news. All right. He's, he has drained the swamp, and he needs another four years to drain it. It's very deep and wide. It's not easy. It's not something you can do overnight. So we need four more years of him and then four more terms of him, actually. We need 16 years. Anything else you'd like to add? That's all. Thank you very much. And please keep the news exactly the way it is. Do not twist it like the fake news. Well, we're live on, very on, good. on YouTube. This very is good. raw and edited. Very so good. Kinda, very. Thank you. Thank kinda you. Kind of hard to twist this. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. You too. You too. Look at some. A look at some of the signs. We've got better. We've got re, recall. Sorry, it's really bright here. Recall Newsom sign here. I've seen multiple recall. Recall Newsom sign. Yeah, this is another recall Newsom sign. Newsom being California Governor Gavin Newsom, veteran for Trump. We support the police, defend, defend not to fund LAPD, as you can see police officers in riot gear right beside us, out a little bit into the street with demonstrators mostly on the sidewalk and slightly into the street. 
as well on Foothill Boulevard here, here in Tahunga. See if anyone else would like to come on the broadcast. Oh, I got a question about numbers. Do you have an estimate for how many, how many people are out here part of the rally? Yeah, I'd say maybe a hundred. This is a really bad angle. We've got tents and cars blocking, so it's hard to it's hard to give you a, a full crowd shot. But we can walk up and down as we try to speak with more people. Hey brother, I'm sorry it came down on you. It's just I don't know who's you anymore. I've given a few interviews, and all of a sudden it ends up that I'm this and I'm that, or Photoshop me and this and that. So I don't know who to, who to believe it. I I understand you. Yeah. I mean, my my only I my only you. point I, I'd make though is that the, the First Amendment. Yeah, goes no, for I know. Everyone. I'm familiar I mean, with that, but. When they come over and act like they're going to enter the honor, and then all of a sudden your face gets on there and your house gets graffitied, you know? That, that's the thing. So, you know, I don't know who you are. He says you're a good guy, so I believe you. So just stay safe. Well, do you want to you want to pop on for an interview? Huh? You want to pop on for an interview? Well, if you tell me where you're from and you're honest. Yeah, my name's Josh Friedman. I'm a Los Angeles native. Okay. Although I'm usually internationally traveling around the world, and I'm a reporter. That's what I do. I write for Calcos News in California, and I write for other publications and yeah, sure. Other I, places. I All right. All right. So let's. We're we're and we're live on YouTube. Should be on TV, AJ. Okay. Okay, so what brings you out to the well, Trump I stopped rally by today? here when there were about eight or ten people here, um, about six, eight, nine months ago, and uh, they had American flags, Trump stuff, minding mind their own business, and all of a sudden, one day there were seven, eight people across the street, and it turned to twenty-five or thirty. Then it was a F Trump smash. Dem smash uh, Republicans, passes, white supremacists, on and on and on. I'm far from a white supremacist. I'm half Spanish, half English. My parents came over here and I have an African American sister in law. I grew up with every diverse group you can imagine. I'm the farthest thing from a racist. Maybe we could start playing music. Maybe we could yeah, yeah, step Andrews. over here. It's really insulting uh, to me. Do white supremacists exist? I'm sure they do. I'm sure they're in all kinds of races. There's bad people. But when you don't even know anything about anybody and to start targeting them, I'm targeted now as a white supremacist. Well, I've done nothing at all to target, but just because my picture is here when I come here. You know, these we're more diverse here. If you take your camera, look around, you can see we're more diverse here than they are across the street. Was it a span of weeks in which it went from just a handful of people out here to actual yeah, I would clashes? Say it started with uh, about eight or nine people, and then it turned into, uh, you know, 140, 150. And then their numbers increased. Um, there's a couple of people up here in town that have put our names out here and actually have uh, ha actually have uh, incited bad elements to come up here and start problems. Actually, one of her posters, I don't, I'm not going to mention her name, but actually on her site, she says uh, we need as many Nazi hunters up here as possible. That was last Friday. Last Friday was probably the worst worst day up here ever. Would, would you mind if we step over to that side of the driveway? Okay, what happened last Friday? They came, first of all, there were tons of people on that side, then all of a sudden, here comes a bunch of Antifa, BLM, I don't know what, marching down this way with, with weapons hanging out of their cars. Came to the middle of the street, and they started to come over at us. Our guys, I'm not gonna say our guys are 100% innocent, so you can get bad in all time, but almost a fight ensued. And then it ended up further on down that way. We, they kept coming over and coming over. Next thing you know, the, uh, they started fighting with the cops. All of a sudden, you got 175 cops here. They're assaulting the cops, throwing uh, smoke bombs over this way, throwing rocks the size of softballs. There's pictures of, of them being airborne coming at us. Smoke bombs, who knows what. So anyway, I guess uh, we, we were told to let you leave and we left, they stayed there duked it out with LAPD. So uh, that's where it's going right now. Any thoughts on what happens from 
uh, here on out here in Tahunga, Crescent Valley. Well, I don't know. I'm just one of uh, how many thousands of people up here. You know, people yeah. stop by here all the time, so I don't know what the plans are for everybody. But keep in mind, these, all these people are all Americans of all colors, creeds, and whatever you want to be. This is my good friend. These are all good, these are good people. Yeah, I know, that's my You said they're okay, so these are good people. But, uh, you know, we're all good people too, and we're not looking for a problem. It just seems like this socialist crazy left wants to take over the country, and that's not that's not at all what uh, America wants. They don't want a socialist country. They don't work. You can't have a country run by the government. Whoever gets their hands on anything and they ruin it. That's about it. I've been I've worked all my life, 40, 50 years in construction. I don't have a heck of a lot of money, but I've, I've always worked for what I've got, and I've always respected it the best I can. You know, as a kid. Did I get in trouble with the cops? You bet I did. I thought I could outrun a cop on my motorcycle until my carburetors fell off. And he caught me and he took his billy club and gave me quite a few whacks. And I knew not to move as I was getting whacked. So, you know, basically, you know, you don't listen to the, the police. They, uh, they have, they're worried about their life, too. So are they all good? Hell no. There's some bad cops. The bad cops should, shouldn't be out there. But that's up to the Democratic-run cities or Republican to get rid of them. If you've got a bad cop, why is he in your department? Why are the inner cities in such turmoil? What about black baby lives? What about all the inner city family lives? 3,000 blacks die a year. You know, look, what's going on with that? That's okay. You know? It's just, it's, you know, it's just that uh, I, see, I see what happened to George Floyd, and yeah, there should be justice. That was dead wrong. But God, what about Officer Dorn? They died in a pool of blood, you know? I, I mean, I listened to the, the debate last night, the Republican debate. His wife put me in tears. The poor, the poor guy didn't deserve to die like that. So the whole world's upside down right now, at least. This is, uh, and hopefully this election will get be, be over with and that's it. Whoever wins, that's who we got to live with. That's about all I got to say. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. What's that going to be on so I can see it? On my YouTube channel, Josh Friedman, J-O-S-H-F-R-I-E-D-M-A-N. My YouTube channel is my name. Oh, Josh Friedman. You just type in Josh Friedman. It's not okay, very hard Josh. to find. Thanks, yeah, thank you. Outside, in and out of all places. Here we are along Foothill Boulevard in Tahunga. I apologize if the audio on that wasn't so great. I didn't see many comments about that, but I presume given the background noise, street noise, music, mask, etc., I don't know how well he could be understood, but hopefully well enough. We've now heard from a couple people about what happened last week. If I could venture over to the other side and get comment from counter protesters, that would be nice, or at the very least journalistic, but it, it does not look like we have any counter protesters across the street. We have someone on a megaphone across the street beside a free food table. We also have someone with an American flag across the street and uh, looks like a couple signs from the pro-Trump crowd. Meanwhile, in the street, other than Annabelle, we have LAPD officers in riot gear and a handful of demonstrators. Let's see if anyone... Ready? Would you like to come on camera? No! Okay. Well, your, your sign will, I guess. Say no to Sleepy Joe. Anyone like to do an interview? No problem. We're here for our president of our country. My channel, man! All right, they say they're here for their president awesome. and the country. Welcome! Glad to see you're there supporting us. Absolutely! There are multiple recall Gavin Newsom signs. Let's try to give you a better picture. Here's one of them. Actually, here are two of them. To, to try to give you a better picture of the crowd, 
which it's not so easy to do because of the, the tent setup and whatnot, but we, and the glare. We've got in front of this shopping center, in front of this big five sporting goods, we have one, two, three tents set up as part of the rally and demonstrators about 40 feet or so beyond this tent right here. Annabelle estimated about 100 people here. It's hard for me to tell, but that might be about right. It does not appear to be anywhere near as crazy as last week. And if counter press protesters don't show up, I presume it won't become anything like it was last week. But I don't know. Will or will or will not they come? Women for Trump sign. Good to see you back. Yeah. You guys, stay out of the driveway. Will you be in Beverly Hills tomorrow? Edwin, you guys, stay out of the driveway. Oh, sorry. You you want to? I've got a live stream going on YouTube. Do you want to pop on for a quick interview? For, for what? What exactly? It's on my YouTube channel. My my name is Josh Friedman, and that's my YouTube channel as well. Okay. What's your name? Josh Friedman. And I could look that up with you. Shalom. Yep, it's very easy. Shalom, shalom, oh. right? Uh, you you, you, Jewish, you right? speak Hebrew? No, I don't. Yeah. I, I know somebody. I know a person who has who's got a last name Friedman, and he's Jewish. Uh, I've got the last name. I've got the nose. I've got it all. Are you Jewish? Of course. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're sorry, what, what, we're were you, what were you we saying? We support Israel. Yes. All right, well, I'm out here as a journalist, so I'm not really here for Israel, against Israel, or what? <laughs> no, no problem, though. What was that? There's a lot of communists in Israel. Uh, I don't know if I'd call them communists, but the left is pretty strong in numbers in Israel. I don't know the man we were the man we were about to interview. And by speaking of Israel, I think I saw a, a Jews for Trump sign or something like that around here. Do you do you have a Sleepy Joe sign? Uh, oh. Um, sir, would sir would would you like to do a quick interview? All right, no problem. No problem. Let's see. Some thin blue line flags. If you go on to Twitter and search to Hunga, I don't know, but that might cue you in as to whether or not there's going to be a... I, uh, another crowd showing up here. Maybe, maybe not. I don't have an answer as to whether or not counter-protesters are coming, but it looks like there still are none. And from what I understand from talking to people and from watching some footage from last week, it appears that LAPD officers were involved in clashes with counter-protesters here last week and during those clashes I believe there were some sort of projectiles fired maybe rubber bullets I'm not sure and uh, maybe some of the counter-protesters were hit I think there's footage of that but I'd have to double check officer is there a supervising officer here yeah, my name is Josh Friedman. I'm with Calcos News, and I was just wondering if I could get comment from a supervising officer. Are you a supervising? Oh. Yeah, but I think it was. Okay, thank you very much. Let's see if we can get. Where, where are you from? I, right, right now I'm live on my YouTube channel, but I write for Calcoast News, and my reporting is on Calcoast News. Well, like on radio, TV, or YouTube? I, I'm right now on my YouTube channel, 
but I write for an online newspaper called Cal Coast News, and I use footage from the protests for my reporting there. I, you know, with the new age and the internet, we need to multitask in our, in our line of work. Yeah, we're not available right now to give any type of comments because it's a liquid yeah, operation. Okay. Apologize. That's all right. Thank you. All right. No comment from the lieutenant who is apparently here. Let's see. Where did that... Annabelle, where's the guy you were just talking to? I... Yeah, there's, there's a break. What? As you can see, the officers have a line established on Foothill, but they're basically, at the moment, protecting Trump supporters from other Trump supporters. I say that I said he slightly. Was buying a T-shirt, but kidding. Now he disappeared. It's all right. We'll maybe find someone else to talk with. Let's see. Defund, defend, not defund. Back the blue. And recall Newsom sign here, sir. Would you like to pop on a live stream for a quick interview? Sure. All right. My name's my, my name's Josh Friedman. I'm live on my YouTube channel, and I also write for Calcos News. And that is a it's a it's, right it's an online investigative news publication. What are you investigating? It's based in San Luis Obispo County, so most of it has to do with government corruption in San Luis Obispo County, but also at times elsewhere in the state. Do you know where I think there's most corruption? Sure. At the LA City Sheriff's Department, I believe Alex Villanueva has been compromised. I feel that uh, he is changing 49 felonies to misdemeanors has allowed him to empty out our jails. We had before February or before COVID, 17,600 inmates. And for 170 positives and no deaths, he entered, he uh, got rid of 4,300 of them. Now we have 11,800 in our jails. I feel that's being compromised. It's not in the best interest of the civilians who he's supposed to represent. I feel he's uh, treasonous in his actions. Also, I feel that the new law that the uh, Civilian Oversight Committee has put together, which attacks the impunity law for the cops, which means they have to be responsible for their own actions, whereas now the state of California uh, accepts their liability if they do something wrong. After all, we do send them out into a situation where they might be uh, in trouble or have to make the wrong decision and then they get uh, sued, and then the city picks up the tab. The impunity law changes that. Karen Bass instigated uh, legislation in our uh, Sacramento office to include uh, uh, removing the impunity clause for the sheriffs and for the, for, the, for the police, and that is outrageous. Karen Bass ought to be uh, held for treason for doing that as well. Uh, Mr. Bonner, who's on the commission for the Civilian Oversight Committee, has put up 17 clauses, all bad. Kevin DeLeon, who instigated SB 54, is the man who's responsible for this SB 54, which causes the uh, non-repatriating of criminals. When you're a criminal and you're a civilian, you come back out onto the streets. But when you're a criminal and you're illegal, you need to be repatriated. That's not happening anymore. You can thank Alex Villanueva, you can thank Kevin DeLeon, you can thank the Civilian Oversight Commission for LA Sheriffs for their, for their uh, implementation of this and ushering in of SB 54. Now, the new law that uh, Alex Villanueva is putting it together is uh, saying that he will no longer honor transfers to our uh, ICE agents. That means that uh, even the most hardened criminals, the ones who kill people, are now not being taken to ICE for repatriation. So I just thought I'd let you know what's up. Do you, when you 
focus in on Villanueva, for instance. Do you, do you think his hands are tied because of SB 54? This is a or do you think it, Or do you think that it's his responsibility to disobey SB 54? SB 54 was uh, the uh, beginning, and he just took it further. He, he uh, ushered in SB 54 uh, February 2nd when he started uh, kicking, when he kicked ICE out of our jail system. ICE used to have an office in our jails. When the criminal was done with his time to be repatriated, they would just automatically turn him over to the ICE agents in the jail. The ICE agents have been taken out of the jail. All communication between the sheriffs and ICE have been uh, canceled because of Alex Villanueva. Well, was it? Uh, maybe I'm forgetting. It's been a few months, but didn't SB 54 create those regulations where the, the the sheriff isn't allowed to cooperate with ICE on the detainers? No. it's It had a, a basic uh, understanding that the most serious of offenders were going to be repatriated. We have, we have stepped over that boundary of SB 54, and now we, we do not repatriate even the hardest of criminals. They come onto your streets, and it's all Alex Villanueva's fault. And uh, we all need to get involved by calling and getting involved and making a comment on the Civilian Oversight Committee's uh, website. You can make a comment from your from your bathroom if you want, and uh, do it from your computer. But make a comment because if you sat there and listened to all the comments, all you would hear is the other side. You never hear a patriot's comment or a civilian who might be interested in their own safety because your safety is being taken away from you by Alex Villanueva, SB 54, and uh, their inability to uh, protect citizens. What? Your your sign says support. We we support law enforcement. That's correct. Uh, I do. Uh, is how would you explain that law enforcement who does their jobs or what? Because you're you're not so supportive of Villanueva. Okay. For well, I support law enforcement. I applaud their uh, last ten years of black men who were killed, who are unarmed. The last 10 years has been 137 or approximately 13 a year. Last year was 14. So for 14 people in a in a 40 million dollar million amount of people who are black in this country, 14, I applaud that record because that's across the entire United States. Imagine only 14. A lot of people don't even under know that it's only 14. And of course, any any of them are bad. But out of that 14, 12 of them had law enforcement. Uh, interactions before and we're criminals and the other two they become millionaires if there's body-worn cameras to uh, see it all happen and that's what we have now we've had a we've had a body-worn cameras that's been instigated and the, and the city look they're all wearing them and they will they will also see what's going on for you and they'll uh, tell a story all by themselves just like uh, everywhere else but I'm saying that uh, I applaud my police's record I think that record is outstanding. Just imagine, 40 million blacks in this country, 14 a year, and it's been 14 a year for the last 10 years. Any more questions? Sure. Uh, it's, a, it's for the most part, from what I understand, a, a pro-Trump rally, but also we've got Gavin Newsom, a recall Gavin Newsom, and some local issues. What, generally speaking, is the crowd more interested and Trump more interested in local issues, a combination of things? I think it's an issue on uh, safety. I think in order to be safe, you must have the rule of law. The rule of law involves the police. Uh, funny, I have been, I'm 67, I've never had any run-ins with the police other than a ticket. And uh, although I did go to a rally and I was handcuffed, but it was a rally because uh, the uh, people there were being helped with Eric Garcetti's uh, money to pay the ACLU lawyers to, to uh, for, for criminals to expunge their records. So uh, I went to that rally and uh, because we couldn't get into where the illegal aliens were, I was handcuffed for like 30 minutes. But I, I applaud the police for not, you know, but that was, in that position, I didn't think it was right. But again, um, I, I applaud the police for their record. I uh, applaud each and every hero. They're all heroes to me. Uh, and, and as far as a few bad ones, well, they get, they get uh, over, there's a program called Post that the LA City has to go through to become a policeman. 
and they also go through a site treatment which they try and uh, ask them you know what or, or examine them for mental capabilities they need to be uh, good conversationalists they have to be able to defuse the situation because you know they come under hard situations they're part of their qualities or qualifications involve being able to defuse any situation so uh, they're, they're heroes to me, and what they have to go to to become a cop and to become a sheriff, it's, it's something that uh, most people just wouldn't go jump through hoops, and they don't make it a lot of the time. And we weed these people out early. All right. Thank you very much. Again, it's, it's a Josh Friedman YouTube channel if you want to find Josh it. Josh Friedman. Yeah, okay, Josh, Josh Friedman. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Speaking of LAPD officers, and the aforementioned body cams there, I believe that's one. I don't know how, how well you guys could hear that, I'm sorry. Not the ideal audio setup here, but hopefully you could hear them all right. Some apparel, it looks like, CNN, uh, the media, is i can't read what the rest of that says but yeah we've got we've got trump flag or excuse me no i think we do have a trump flag also american flags thin blue line flags looks like a trump flag or two <laughs> eric early for congress i guess he's running against adam schiff i was confusing him earlier with, with someone else we have a Gadsden flag, an All Lives Matter flag. Hi, hi, officer. Um, back, back the blue. Hi. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Gad, Gadsden flag, All Lives Matter. I'm live on YouTube. I don't care. Would you Would you like to pop on for an interview? Hell no. Okay. Yeah, Fine. Thank you. Are you guys uh, left or right? We're not left, we're not right. I know that seems impossible to believe, but... No, it's not impossible I'm, right now. I'm a journalist. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's what so I you guys do. Are, my, it's like my name's Josh Friedman. Someone's I, stuck in the middle? I don't view it as the middle. I I do have my personal views. Right. Which... This is your lady? Are, she's, she's someone helping me out. Uh, she looks cool. Yeah, Josh, she's fine. So, you guys can walk up and down. Did you guys just come at her this weekend? Yes. Or this week? I wanted to make it last week, but I couldn't make it in time. Oh, you fucked up. I did fuck up. Yeah. Last week was really good. You want to explain on camera what happened last week? No, because this is our first time coming up here right now. It's like, uh, we, uh, well, I own a shop right here on Boston, which is, this is Lowell. Next street, next street down is Boston. Uh -huh. And then uh, it started to get really, really crazy. So I showed up. As soon as you want to start throwing any of the Antifa people want to start throwing stuff at my boys right here? Look, I've already tried to be a police officer. I couldn't because they said my dad had a, a bad uh, drug record, which was uh, we have the same last name, so I'm sure they reflected all off on us. But as soon as you want to start throwing dudes things at these guys right here, I'm gonna back these guys all day long. I'll tell you what, 100%. So that's what it is. So that's where I came out here tonight, finally for after the last week and a half or a uh, month and a half of this shit going down we don't want the protests like if you guys want to go ahead and protest peacefully go ahead all day long bring as many people as you guys want out to protest peacefully it's totally fine but don't get any of the anarchy people out here to do any of the bullshit because we're going to stop them immediately they're going to get stopped really fast they want to they want to throw a rock at this dude right here look this guy just right here i told him do you have a family he said yes, okay? I got two four-year-olds that I wanna go home to, okay? And he's got kids himself he wants to go home to tonight, okay? I don't wanna have a rock throw a mammy because they look, you know, mess up his pretty face? Fuck no, not at all, he's got a pretty face. So do I, but I'm gonna tell you right now, if you guys wanna throw a rock at his fucking face, I'm gonna go and close line the first dude that does that. I'm not gonna shoot at him like a fucking idiot, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna fucking knock these fools out. So if they wanna show up in an hour and a half, like they usually do, they wanna come late, they wanna come from Arizona, they wanna come from different states, this, that, the other, it's all good. But I'm telling you right now, like anybody that comes here from this whole point on, these guys will back us, but in the same sense too, we're gonna catch these idiots for, for uh, these guys a simple way. 
I got four guys that are over there right now. A really simple way. So if they can't catch them and they want to shoot at bing bags, because you shouldn't been here right now. You shouldn't be here right now. Okay, because you want to do anarchy bullshit. Just saying. It's very simple, Josh. You haven't seen any agitators or anarchists Not out here today? Not or... today. Not tonight. They will come. They will come. They come late because you know why? Anything happens after dark. It does. It really happens after dark. They will show up in the in the uh, the right here, the PetSmart. Very quick. You can take a picture of that. It's a it's a Harbor Freight. They're gonna come here in a big truck. They're all gonna park out there. They're gonna walk down here. They're gonna rally. They're gonna do all this bullshit, and then they're gonna think that they're gonna prove something, but they're not tonight. Not even close. This this little community that's hung. Southern community that far away from Locker Center where they got Glendale PD up here too even Locker Locker or locking out of sheriffs they they can come and do whatever they want tonight they're gonna get knocked in the ground I'm telling you what and they're all gonna get arrested there's paddy wagons all up and up and down the streets so let them come let them act like idiots like they normally do and if they they can't loot any stores what are you gonna take a box of tampons from the from the uh, Albertsons, that's possibly what they're gonna get at. Or their mom and their dad beat them too much. They, that's possibly another thing. They need to be, you know, they need to think the right way. Their mom and their dad let them go and do whatever the fuck they want to do their whole entire life. It's perfect. Have Have you had any personal encounters with the counter protesters or agitators, whatever you want to call them? This is my first time, but this is my last time. I've already got sick of it because look, look what they're doing on street. This is a two-lane highway both ways, okay? They're fucking the street up. These people got to get home. They work all day long. These people don't need to take this much time getting home, okay? They got home to go. They got to get home to go get their kids. They got to go home, pick up their fucking, take their babysitter back to wherever their babysitter had to go to babysit their kids all day long. This is, this is chaos. This is a bullshit. This is like a this is like an easy flowing street every single day of the week. Coronavirus is a weapon. It's All a weapon? Chinese do it. They don't say it. All Chinese do it. Where? Huh? I'm I mean, where? 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 She Chinese said, people do that I think she straight. just said coronavirus is a weapon. Chinese people. I didn't catch it, but um, well, it is a weapon because Chinese people. That's what the 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 whole thing is. Is Chinese people made the coronavirus up? This is a political bullshit thing. As soon as the elections go off, it's gonna be fucking. It's it's like oh, you know what? Everything's being coming open again. It's all political. It's all a fucking joke. It's straight a fucking joke. I'm telling you. That's why these guys are out here right now, because they're just doing their job. It's not that they have an easy job right now. It's fucking hot outside. They're trying to take care of the shit. But they're trying to take care of us. Trust. What about the, the community? Do you feel like the community is supporting you? This is my first time out here. So in the last two months, this has been going on right here on, on Lowell and, and Foothill Boulevard. My first time out here. Okay, but I'm getting sick of what's going on out here. You want to throw rocks at this guy right here? Okay, or that guy, or that guy, or that guy, or that guy. I'm coming out finally. Okay, I'm gonna come out finally because you're not gonna throw rocks. I'm gonna go across the street, and, that, and as soon as you throw a rock, I'm gonna fucking knock you in the face. I haven't seen footage. Not, I don't have no guns. You can check me. I got no guns. I haven't seen fo um, I haven't seen footage of rock throwing last week. I saw some of the clash. Were there rocks thrown last there week? There was rocks thrown last week. Yeah. At you officers, at Trump supporters, at hundred percent. Why do you think they're gonna shoot you with fucking beanbags? Because you're throwing rocks at them. So it's just common sense. You don't have a lot of common sense if you're gonna throw rocks. I'm not gonna shoot you with something because you don't throw rocks at me. Okay? I'm not gonna go 30 minutes later and flatten your fucking tires so you can't get out of here so we'll figure you out. No, I'm gonna shoot you with a fucking beanbag so you can't fucking move. That's what it is. These people are stupid. They want to go and they want to rally and they want to fucking get up here and this, that, the other. There's too much political Trump slash love slash look. These happy police officers out here. No, I can't even say that. A third of these police officers might vote Democrat one way. I doubt it. But Trump's going to make it fucking happen again. Have you, have, you, have you pulled? Have you pulled the officers? <laughs> what are you gonna vote? I can't talk about that. He ain't gonna vote. I think, not, I, no I think he's work. been he's listening right in now. on the conversation. No, it doesn't matter. You know what? But <laughs> our lives are turning out better. My life is turning out better. You know what? I'm I'm a contractor. Okay, I make 1.5 million dollars a year. 
I did not take any stimulus money. Not one fucking cent. Oh. Not even a little bit. Tell them we're ready to do the I didn't take one fucking cent. You know, I don't need to go back in there, okay? Because I'm not a fucking Democrat. I don't, I'm not I'm a scum sucker. Hey, I know how to make money. The problem with the people is that the Democrats don't know how to make money. The Republicans know how to make fucking money. There's makers and there's takers in this fucking world. Democrats take fucking money. Republicans go out and work hard for it. That's what this dude and this dude right here is doing right now. Look, that's Glendale. Or wait. That says LAPD on it. Well, it could be Glendale because Glendale's the same patch. Right! But anyways, even if it's not fucking Glendale, Glendale, if you see Glendale later on down the road, because there is, there's a boatload of them. I saw Officer, are, it, my truck. are there Glendale police officers out there now? Yeah, it's called truck down there. Yeah, All so right, so if we'll you guys want it. Right now, no, but the city's right there. Yeah. But, uh, so but, but, but right run, now, there are no, there are no Glendale well, officers. Know, just have them. Okay. Yeah, if they want to run and go back there and do their bullshit. We had a car outside of our fucking office, which I'm on Boston, so I'm in Glendale, okay? Right here, past Lowell, is in Glendale, okay? We had a car, pass out. These guys put a bunch of shit back in their car when they came up here and then all the fucking rocks being thrown, smoke bombs being thrown, the whole fucking nine yards. We don't need this bullshit up here. I'm telling you right now, not at all. These guys are here for our protection, but as soon as these idiots want to bring stupid militia out here, it's going to go off. And it might go off in different ways too. You might some, see some idiot wanting to suck his finger in the back. It's going to go off. So. Anything, uh, anything else? No, not really. Just telling you. If you're if you're for a different party, it's good. But they don't need to come up in this town right now and try to fuck with these people. Because if you see from start to finish, these people right here, they love this town. They do. We love them 100%. I'm telling you right now. 150%. Take your camera and point up that way and take it point it back down that way because we love these people in this town hey guys thanks for your support i my house mom also wants me to have any stuff back this, this line right here all right yeah he told like by the it. officer to step behind this line all right but i think we're we're wrapping we're up right now okay yeah thank you all right where's your mask at it's right in. where's my mask at i have no idea where your mask it's is it's, it's in right. my pocket all right all right good Thank you, brother. Thank you. You have a good one. It's right here. Oh, he's got a mask. <laughs> Mike's got a mask. <laughs> Mike has a mask. Mike has a mask. Look. It's a little alliteration there. It's a take. For all the Antifa motherfuckers that want to come up in this town to Honga, you're going to get dealt with. Peace out. Don't come here because we don't need any of your political bullshit. We love black. We love white. We love fucking Mexican. We love green. We love brown we love fucking everything that's how it goes I tell you what don't shit here because this ain't your party don't try to fucking ruin anything about this whole fucking process that's going on right now plus black lives matter for black people and they fucking hate the fact whatever you're fucking doing right now and trying to fucking ruin the black lives matter fucking protest because you guys are fucking rooting you guys are fucking you guys are rioting you guys are fucking up cop powders you guys are doing everything wrong you guys are trying to fucking reset this whole fucking thing right now I'm telling you what don't do this anymore because it's a fucking joke. You guys stupid ass motherfucking idiots are fucking doing this fucking the way reverse right. Harry, that's what it is. I'm telling you, you got sexy glasses. See? All right, well, don't have to touch her, dude. I'm not trying to keep on her. You guys are good? Thank yes. you. All right, take care. Here's an interesting outfit. Hello. You want to pop on my live stream? Oh yeah, I'm a spy for I don't know whom, but okay, yeah. I'm live on Josh Friedman YouTube channel. My name's Josh Friedman. You can you can tune on in along with the other 180 people watching right now. Are you Trump or Biden? Ma'am, I'm press. My name's Josh Friedman. I'm live on YouTube. I write for Calcos News. You can find all about me online. You can you can watch my videos, you can read my articles. I'm not voting for either. I'm not voting, period. Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am, I'm a spy. How did you know I'm a spy? Choose for Trump. 
I'm Jewish. Good. He's oh. the most pro-Israel guy you'll ever have, probably running this country. Okay, we're Jewish too. Were you at the Elon Omar event last year on Pinoga? No, last year I was out of the country. I'm from LA, but I'd been living out of the country for five years. They had to, shut down. They had to shut down Pinoga. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Ilhan, Ilhan Omar was was here was for an for an event year. last year. Yeah, it was at the Hilton on Canoga last year, and so many people showed up. The whole, the whole Israeli community showed up to protest for being there, and a lot of them were Democrats. And we had big signs made up: "Americans against Democrats hate." So. And a lot of a lot of Jewish people sort of started seeing the light on that day. It was pretty incredible. I, I think your friend colleague uh, was asking me if I'm pro Trump or Biden. I don't know if she's still interested. I don't know. You might talk to her. All right, I guess she's no longer interested. All right, but uh, she's I, I'm. Her parents were both. Um, I'm Jewish. Rabbis. Born born and raised Jewish. I mean, <laughs> there's a, once you're born Jewish, you are Jewish. Some people convert. Oh yeah, that's that's true. I guess you could convert. All right. Bye. Have a nice day. Uh, some lady here is convinced I'm a spy. All right. Hey, spy. How are you doing? I guess it'd be awkward. I usually get accused of being Mossad, but I guess it would be awkward if she accuses me of being Mossad if they're defending Judaism and view me as a spy. Uh, all right, what, what, what were we up to? Where's that man who's going to do an interview? I don't know, he was Maybe we go wrong. And sorry, guys, in the chat, it's been hard to monitor comments today. There's a lot of glare here. It's very bright. But as we try to find this man... Yeah, Mossad confirmed for sure. A Mossad, born and raised Mossad. KGB also. <laughs> KGB and Mossad. Zionist KGB Mossad. Uh, you know, you name it, I'm that. I guess no one wants to give me CIA credentials. Melania isn't Russian. I think she's Slovenian. Uh, da, 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 da. Or let's just try to find where. Where's this man who yeah, wanted to talk I, I to us? All right. So maybe we we point the camera at the PetSmart of all things. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I. That's the first I heard that PetSmart is a gathering point for counter protesters. But yeah. There's another media group here. Who, who else there. is there? Yeah, yeah. This guy. He's part of China, Chinese media. Oh, Chi which Chinese what media? Just like you. Like CGTN or something? This is interesting. Well, it looks like they're filming a segment right now, so when they're done with that, maybe. Have you spoken with him? Oh, oh, um, are they with, uh, what's the name of that newspaper? Um, oh, I can't think of the name of the newspaper. What's the name of the, the newspaper associated with the, the Falun Gong movement and that's pro-Trump? Someone help me out in the chat. Although I don't know who they are. But they're in the middle of filming something, so there you guys can see it. This woman was screaming something about the coronavirus being a Chinese plot. What was she saying? As she was running with the flag? Um, coronavirus is a bioweapon from China? Maybe something like that. Oh, Epic Times, thank you. Are they with Epic Times? Oh, no, they're talking in Chinese. I'll come back. They're they're filming something. 
with an interesting microphone. Crack? Yeah. And an American flag. Yeah, might be available for mountain biking tomorrow. Anyway, I'll come back when they're done filming. Annabelle. Can you zoom in on the PetSmart? So the man who was making... Yeah, it's Where's so the bright. Pet smart? Oh, straight, yeah, yeah, straight yeah, yeah. there. The man who was basically saying Antifa, yeah. BLM, don't show up here. He was saying that he expects later this evening counter protesters or agitators to gather here at the PetSmart. Based on what, I'm not sure, but you can see that PetSmart's up the street from here. Like one football field length away, something something like that. Can you zoom back out now? All right. But nothing really doing over here at the moment. Oh, you got a light. Here's a, oh, we're, we're still zoomed in. There we go. Oh. It's up, it's up. Uh, couldn't hear. I don't know if she was cursing at Trump or supporters or what, but I heard that woman screaming bitches as she leaned her neck out the truck window and drove away. We, we do have people across the street, but they appear to be part of the same crowd. As I've been saying during this broadcast, looks like we have Trump supporters on both sides of the street. Although most of them, sorry about the Zoom problems, I'm not used to... Oh, now someone's screaming losers of Tahunga as she peeks her head out the window while driving. Okay, so the woman, the woman who is doing the parent reporting for, Ch for Chinese media is screaming whatever is going on in America is CNN's fault. I don't know if this is really a, a news publication or some stunt or what. There's a prayer going on. Annabelle. Oh, I was thinking we were on that hot spot, but then I realized I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry, officer. There's, across the street, there's a prayer. Maybe you can see him kneeling right over there. Can you check the percentage on, on this? Is this possible that this better boot pack is off? It should be working. Do you need to charge? I don't know. I don't know how to check the percentage. Should I get, will I get a notification if it's getting low? Let's. I've I've got a battery pack. Let's walk down to Lowell, the cross street of or the, the nearest major cross street. We're on Foothill Boulevard. Oh. <laughs> and I'm running into a flag. Looks like there's an officer having a discussion with people in front of the In and Out. I find it 
interesting as I as I walk with Annabelle right now. I find I mean where demonstrators expect a member of the press to be openly or covertly for one candidate or another or one political side or another. It almost seems like I've got to give a speech on a regular basis now as to whether or not, uh, I mean, as to whether I'm supporting Trump or Biden. There was a lady in a wheelchair who called us spy. Yeah, that's part of what I'm referencing. So, all right, we're at the corner or the intersection of Foothill and Lowell. Now, this is interesting. The city of Glendale, as you've got a motorcycle with a thin blue line flag, we're in Los Angeles, and Glendale is on the other side of this intersection, the city of Glendale, that is. Let's see if we can cross. Or, I th here we go, here's the city of, here's the LA city limit sign, and it's really bright, and I can hardly see what I'm pointing at, but there, you should see it. There we go, the LA city limit sign. So we're just within the city limits of Los Angeles and hence have LAPD officers present as opposed to Glendale officers present which police were talking about or one officer was clarifying to the man I was interviewing a little while back. I think there are more people now. You think there are more people yes. showed up? Uh, hard for me to tell. I don't okay. really get that impression, but possibly. Maybe Actually, I wanted to cross the street to go speak with the other... The pe let's do that. Yes. Let's, let's cross the street so we can speak with the people on the other side of the street and give you an angle of the protest from across the street. I should say, rally, I should say. They have free food over there. Are you hungry? A little bit. Here we are again at the corner of Foothill and Lowell. This way. I think we can cross. Oh, it's that. Well, it's a green... Green traffic light. Red pedestrian hand. Okay, comments, comments, comments. Let's take a look at the chat. A while back, Carol, thanked for the stream. You're welcome, Carol. Annabelle's a super spreader. Jonah, I don't think it's the Epic Times who are here. They they seem, this woman with the microphone seems like she's doing something satirical. Maybe not satirical. Maybe, maybe that's... I think I need a gas mask for all the fumes. It just here. doesn't really come across as the Epic Times. Uh, we've got gas masks. I think, the, I think the air is all right, but there's a big SUV right in front of us right here. I guess traffic is backed up a little bit because of the rally or because the police are in the street cutting off a lane. And maybe you want to say that's because of the rally, maybe you want to say that's because of what happened last week and the threat of counter protesters showing up and there being clashes. I think we should have crossed already. I don't think we need to wait for... Okay, there we go. Across Foothill Boulevard we go. People do like to rev their engines a little bit around here. The demonstrators are lined up as our LAPD. 
starting just past this in and out and they go a little while a little ways past the big five sporting goods If you're just tuning in, things got a bit violent here last week. There have been rallies here weekly on Fridays. And last week, a bunch of counter protesters showed up. Unfortunately, I wasn't there. I wanted to get there, but I didn't get there, get here in time. Didn't manage to make it out last Friday afternoon or evening. But a lot of people here are blaming it on Antifa, on agitators, etc. So here, across, here's the, the, the rally, looking from across the street at both the demonstrators and the LAPD officers. Actually, the LAPD officers are getting a bit relaxed now. They're not really in a line anymore. They're more like in circles and pairs talking with one another. Watch out, watch out. And then we've got another crowd right over here on our side of the street in the shade outside the Albertsons. But it does not look like we have any counter protesters here. Let's look at what... Is everyone here with the rally across the street? You're with the rally across the street? There are no counter protesters over here, are there? No. Sorry to disappoint you. Yeah, it is. I think I think it disappoints my audience more. Actually what we do, we feed the homeless. We're a group called uh, Hope for Homeless Youth. I'm one of the pastors, it's a representative group of pastors of this area. So we just want people to know that we're down here praying for um, our city, we're praying for our police department, we're praying for peace, we're praying for this uh, pandemic, you know, and uh, humbling ourselves, <clears throat> asking God and the uh, public to forgive us for we haven't been the church that's been alive and hasn't been out helping people, you know, and that's primarily um, why we're down here tomorrow, we have a big feeding for needy families will feed you know up to 200 families tomorrow free food so we just want to be a church i have a free computer training center i give away free computers to underprivileged kids down in south central and up here so we just want people to know that we're a church that is really involved in helping people and making a difference out here you know are there people out here who aren't able to go to church because of covid restrictions yeah. There's a lot of people. Huh? Hey, okay, God bless you. Come, come, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. come in the morning or come, yeah, or come on a Saturday. Oh, yeah. I've been going there. there are still a lot of churches that aren't, aren't meeting. Some churches are meeting outside. We meet outside about every morning. Have our services. There's some that are meeting inside that are, you know, practice distancing and they wear masks so there's a lot so it's a mixed group I guess okay um, you know there's a lot that don't feel that they feel like it's unconstitutional to tell the church they can't meet and they can't sing and so there's kind of a, a controversy about that the whole thing going on now is that part of what motivates people to come out here weekly or are there different reasons that people come out here um, no um, there, there was a group you know that are that are against uh, our governor okay because he's making laws that forbid churches to meet so they're they're against uh, governor nice ne what's his name Neeson. Newsom and uh, but primarily this is just a today's been 
there's been no events here because the anti-Trump people are those that want to become violent and throw rocks and throw bricks and throw everything and fight with people. They're not here. They didn't show up today. Were you here last week? I wasn't here. Were you? No, I wasn't, unfortunately. No, I, I just heard about it. They had tear gas. They had fights break out. They had, uh, you know, somebody had a gun, but uh, they had to shoot out, uh, shoot people with rubber bullets. It was really bad last week. That's why the police are here. There was a lot more police here earlier, but they come to, you know, protect, protect that group over there from... They, we, we brought several wooden crosses, you know, because we're churches, we wanted to bring a cross, but the police said we had to put the crosses away because they were afraid that the uh, Antifa people, which are violent, and then some of the uh, Black Lives Matters people are also violent, okay, so they were afraid that they would take the, the wood from the crosses and use it to attack them. Has, has that ever happened to you or your church? Um, let's see. Uh, I haven't personally been involved in that. Now, I we, we go down in front of the uh, city hall in Los Angeles, and we wash people's feet down there. We do what's called reconciliation uh, ministry, and we pray for each other. And then we do, uh, we actually do baptisms down there in front of the city hall just to show that we're not afraid to really be on the cutting edge. But everything we do is to bring forth uh, peace and dissolve uh, violence and conflict between people and just show them that, you know, what Jesus would do, he'd be out there loving people and uh, caring for people. And, uh, you know, he said, love your enemies, you know, he didn't say, go. You know, go do violent. He said, "Don't return evil for evil." You know, do good for people, and that, that's the way to make your enemies your friends. Is you, you love your enemies. You know? We can we can have our differences, but we can agree to disagree peacefully. Okay, and uh, we don't need to use bad tactics. Okay. Um, we can disagree peacefully, you know, because everybody has their strengths. Trump's got his strengths and his weaknesses, you know, Biden's the same way. And, uh, but we just need to be grateful that we need to, uh, instead of fighting each other and complaining, we need to be grateful that we, we live in a free country, you know, that we don't have to, uh, that we have food to eat, you know, that we can raise our our kids in a safe place, you know, that we don't have a dictatorship, you know, over this nation. And um, so uh, that's kind of that's kind of it. But we we love the good Lord. We don't push God or religion. Hold on one second. Hey, Jesus! A hundred more years. I think that was a anti-Donald Trump song, God but I'm not you. positive. <laughs> uh, what's the name of your church, and where can people well, find we're, we're information about? We help different churches to start outreach departments. This is my group, that's me and my wife. I run this group called Hope for Homeless Youth. And then we, our church is called Fire Point, that we help, you can have this if you want. And uh, we help uh, different Fire, groups. Firepointchurch.com, yes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> and where, where do people find out about your homeless aid organization? Uh, they can go, they can go on our uh, website, Hope for Homeless Youth and uh, dot org and they can see our website see a video on the work we do for troubled youth and help get kids out of drugs and gangs and we have a free computer training center down in south central where there's a lot of troubled gang kids a lot of fatherless boys okay for sure just boys that need a father so that's a lot of the ones we work with these guys are a lot of them are in our uh, men's home, and then I have a woman's home for battered women and women that have gone through abuse, and that's up there in Sunland. And uh, so that's a lot of things that we uh, we do to help people. We have a one-year rehabilitation program, Christian discipleship. So that's 
kind of what we do. All right, thank you very much. What's that? I said thank you very much. Hey, thank you guys. Uh, Keep up the good work there. So it looks like the church members are the main people gathered here across the street. Although, who, who are you talking to? Is he also in the church? Are you serious? What do you, what do you say? Excuse me. My name's Josh Friedman. I'm a journalist and I'm live on YouTube. Would any of you be interested in coming on and saying what brings you out today? Go for it. I'm awful on camera. I'm the I'm one who holds the camera. camera too. Well, I mean, <laughs> Hello. it's no pressure. Okay. Not not too many professionals. Go, go for it. What, what brings you out here today? Personally, like just Black Lives Matter to support that. So you're out here to support Black Lives Matter. And you're out here to demonstrate against the Trump well, rally people here, or you just, well, you, you know come what? out here? It's, but it's also uh, very anti-Trump. That's a lot of it, anti-Trump. Anyone but Trump, 2020. That's what I feel. But I want to get my ass kicked, so I'm not, uh, you know advertising it too much right now all the blm left was was blm here today i don't know i don't think so but last week in the last like month or two they were were you here last week yes could you tell me what happened so far i've only heard from uh, that side what happened last week could you uh, tell me what happened last week uh okay last week the police uh for the first time, we're like in between the two sides. And for a while there, it got, it was peaceful because of that. Uh, weeks before the Trump side would come over to this side and try to instigate fights and stuff, which they probably still are right now. And, uh, and then, so the police were in the middle, and then the two sides got together like they have before. And then in the past, the two sides have just broken it up. But the police were there this time, and they called an unlawful assembly and said you had to leave in you know, 10 minutes, whatever, or you get arrested. So most people left, and those that did it got their thing, but I left before that happened. So. Most people on both sides left, or most people on one side I left? I would say 100% of Trump side left, and 75% of BLM side left. There's, there's some video footage online, particularly on Twitter, I think, of BLM side clashing with police, and I, I believe some rubber bullets or some sort of projectile yeah. were fired. Yeah. Did, I, you weren't here at that point? Well, okay, so check this out. I was down here for a while, and I happened to have to get new tires on my car, so I had to go deal with that to leave. When I came back, I couldn't come back to this area because they closed it off. So I literally parked over there. I was above the in and out watching it go down. And then it got kind of heated. So that's when like 100% of Trump side left, three quarters of BLM left. And then, and then it started getting heated and then they kicked us out. So I, I, they kicked us out, I left, that was it. And then after that I started rubber bullets. So I didn't see, I didn't see any rubber bullets. But I saw it on video. Uh, but I wasn't here for Northern Have you Have you been coming out here over several this weeks? This is my third time. Okay. Yeah. And it's this goes back about two months or how, I how would long? Say. But And every, every Friday afternoon? Yeah. And uh, so the Trump side comes out apparently at 1 p.m. BLM around 4. See, now, I have an opinion that um, the, uh, this side could be better if there wasn't friggin' Biden as the representative. Because when, that, when you say this side, you don't mean the, the protest. I mean, I'm an anti-Trump side. Anti-Trump side. Okay, you are talking about the... It is anti-Trump. Okay. I wish there was a better candidate, personally, to get behind. 
because they could get behind their candidate, but we can't get behind ours. I, mean, I don't know. Um, and then so like to have BLM and Trump go against each other was kind of weird in a conflict anyway. I think it would have been better of Trump versus Biden or, I don't know, BLM versus whoever fucking probably is Trump. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, chewing on maybe? I don't, I don't know. You're trying to draw that comparison. Is there a candidate you you feel I like mean, you could get behind? Who... I mean, I, I personally voted for Elizabeth Warren, but that's like Pete Buttigieg. No one was asking for Biden. I, this is my freaking opinion. I, I I will vote for Biden. I'll vote for anyone except for Trump. But I I bet my cousin a hundred dollars uh, three years ago that Trump will get reelected. And he lives in San Francisco. He's good voting for whoever's going against Trump. So will I. And I still feel good about my bet, unfortunately. <laughs> I hope you lose. I, I do too. <laughs> Sounds like you have a conflict of interest. No, I hope I lose. <laughs> but I'm afraid he's going to win because um, there's so much support for him. Biden's not that strong. I feel like I could be Trump. Fucking Biden, they put out there. It's fine. Fine, whatever. I'm not going to argue with that. But, I don't know. Well, personally, I, I thought Hillary Clinton would be the winner. You thought Hillary would win or did not think she would win? I, I, everyone thought she was going to be a landslide. Landslide victory for Hillary? Yes. Okay. Everyone was shocked. Well, well <laughs> you and many others <laughs> thought that. Fucking As we have a large oh. Trump truck making its way down Foothill Boulevard. I'm, I'm pretty boring. Well, we, I, I there isn't you, a very large BLM contingent out here today. <laughs> uh, I hate to break it to you, but uh, I'm not going to be editing you. Although most people accuse me of, uh, or are okay, suspicious okay. that I'm going to highly edit okay, so stuff. Last week, uh, there was some like news there's still like Cape Town or whatever, Seven News. They were filming the Trump side, and then they came back across the BLM side, and the Trump side was yelling, fake news, fake news, at them. At Cape Or something like that, like Seven or Four or, or CBS or something. So a, lo a local LA yeah, news channel. Yeah, so, and they're just like filming what's going on, so. Don't feel too bad. Which side was larger last week at the peak of the demonstration? Equal. Well, okay, okay, larger? Yeah, e last week was the biggest. The Trump float. Oh, the Trump float was here. Yeah, I saw that the next day in uh, Hollywood and Beverly Hills. Okay. And then there's been Harley Davidson. I don't know. People have said gangs and stuff. We yeah. don't have an engines. And... and then this side over here has been very big as well. So and about then, estimate, about how many people? And then people? last week, I think the deal started like marching up and that's what kind of started the whole issue. Yeah. Was everyone on this side BLM or were there also people from BLM? other groups? BLM. Because on over on the Trump side, they, they tend to group a lot of people over here as being Antifa. Antifa. I don't know. I don't judge anybody, but there were some uh, radical people. I don't even want to call it, you know. Like, I don't. I don't know what even the Antifa means or how to identify a person who is from Antifa. It's very decentralized, so yeah, I, and I, quite I anonymous. So, I, I, good luck identifying. Yeah, and I'm not trying to. But about about how many people on each side last week? Okay, 2,000. 2,000 on each side? Probably, like 1,000. Okay. All right, maybe like, yeah. 1,000 to 2,000, 1,200, 1,800. All right. Something like that on each side. So much larger than even the crowd on the Shit Trump side people. today. Shit. All the streets. Anything else you'd like to add? Well, nothing. Or any predictions, maybe? Nothing besides that. Yeah. 
I come up here for like, you know, a little bit of the action, which is kind of some bullshit, you know. Like, but ultimately, I do support. What about Tahunga as a community? More, more. That's a great the, question. The man. Trump side, more on That's the, a great this side. Question. Okay, because I, I work with people in Tahunga all the time, and most people are so good. They are so nice, and I don't, I don't know about political, like where they stand, probably Republican. <laughs> but everyone's been so nice. Like I, I don't know. Like, I haven't had any issues, uh, but I have heard. I have heard the um, N word be used twice by two different people in the town, which I found very uncomfortable. So that has happened. So I think there is some some weird, yeah, history of it here, like racism, which is like coming to the surface now, you know, which is weird. But at the same time, you, you know, you can talk to them about confusing the Trump line and racism line. That's not for me to decide, you know. Uh, I have my opinions, but there's probably way smarter people than me. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, bro. Stay safe. All right, let's go. What, what's your, what's your, uh... jo Josh Friedman. You can just... Type in Josh Friedman on YouTube, and I'm live right now. F R I love it. Exactly. I E D M A. So comfortable. They have no soul, so you can feel the ground. Yeah. Sure thing. Yeah. It's called nomadic state of mind. It's problematic. It's problematic when I'm live streaming. Yeah. I just mean like the whole talking because you don't have a mic, right? And, yes, uh, because I need to yeah, be. Anna, but we, we gotta plug this in. Um, I need to I need to be live in the YouTube app, so it's complicated yeah. if I don't have some camera that can stream on YouTube. Yeah. I just what I try to do, generally speaking, is when I'm doing interviews to step away from the noise. But there's only yeah. so much I can sure. control. Right. Need a little boom mic. They, they make that, boom mics that plug yeah, into that, the side. That would help, actually. Yeah, those are great. Can't help myself. I work in production, so. <laughs> oh, no, I, I need it. I, I, yesterday at a demonstration, there were several people coming up to me actually saying they, they want to help me get better. Yeah. It just yep. doesn't cut it. It's nice. Uh, All right, you guys. How, how, was it just two of you, or how many people were on your side today? Well, we showed up late, and we didn't see... I mean, you're looking at what's going on. Uh, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Not right. yeah. I guess, I guess that's it then. More, so. All right. Thank you. All right. Take Have care. Nice day. Hi. Why is this not showing how much percentage it is? I'll figure it out. Hold, hold for a second. So we, uh, I was just speaking with the man who was here with the BLM man I interviewed. Yeah, we only, uh, I only, as we're having some battery difficulties. I think there are only two counter protesters here today and we just did an interview with one of them. What's up with this lady with the Chinese? I don't know if it's a broadcaster, a news channel. I have no idea what it is, but she's yelling again. All she's Chinese yelling something Trump. about Chinese stuff. All Chinese Trump, she says. All Chinese Trump. That's what she says. All Chinese Trump. Let's go. Let's go across the street and and yeah. Well, are they coming or going or replace? Maybe these are replacements. Yeah. Let's monitor this. So side by side in two lines, LAPD officers marching up along foothill. Now single file, 
and forming a new police line. I don't know if they suspect counter protesters to show up now or what. You guys gonna go back across the street? Yeah, we're heading back across the street. You guys gonna go right this way? Or go around? Well, if you wanna go in a pack, I guess you could. <laughs> I wanna get back to the other side, but I don't wanna go the long way. Yeah, let's go. Uh, I'm gonna go the long way. I don't wanna go charging through a riot squad line. Well, we found two counter demonstrators, but they just left. And I don't think the riot squad is out here for the two men with whom we just spoke. Yeah, but I want to get over to the other side. I hear that Chinese lady still screaming. Oh, it looks like the officers might be leaving. Or maybe, yeah, one, one group leaves, one group stays. That's what it looks like is happening. Sometime soon, I too will be faced with the decision as to whether to leave or stay. There might be action in downtown LA tonight. I'm not sure. There was a lot of action earlier this week in downtown LA. I was there one night. Okay, that lady driving in this white SUV just screamed out, fuck Trump, you fucking assholes. So definitely not everyone here is a Trump supporter. Rami, regarding your point, there was someone on the Trump side echoing that point, saying he expects when it gets dark, the counter-protesters and agitators will arrive, but I don't know if that's based on any strong evidence or source. A lot of traffic in and around this in and out I personally am not stopping for in and out right now. The officers occupying one of the lanes does create a little bit of a log jam here on Foothill by Lowell. Alright, we're back at the start of, or the edge of the rally. There was some water earlier. Yeah. Oh, we don't have any? Sorry guys, I can make a second. Well, alright. It, it's like some friendly chatter between police and Trump supporters. Also, look, people are instructed to stay on or near the sidewalk. Here's the new line of LAPD officers. I'm gonna try to find a different angle where we're not looking into the sun quite as much. I wasn't even here to film you, but okay. this, right. well, I have a I, I have a First Amendment right okay. 
Okay, but I, I'm just ask, asking you to keep it out of my face. I've already had a few of these discussions with people here today. I don't care. I'm, that's, that, and I don't want to be filmed, and I'm, I'm going to be another one. Don't, don't get don't be filmed. This is also a public place, and I'm allowed to, I'm allowed to film it. But, by, by media law, they, I, I'm allowed to film here. But, but, what? I'm just asking you not to film me. <laughs> sure, sure. The right way to protest rather than, than, than messing up our country's businesses and, and violently uh, 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 wrecking havoc in the streets. We're all here having a good time making our cause known instead of uh, being criminal. You think we could step away from the music a little bit so people can hear you clear? Yeah, but I, I just want to know this is the right way to do things. Not coming over here and, and ruining Litchie Mexes or, what, what? or, or going to, 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 to Melrose Avenue. And, and breaking into businesses, that's wrong, okay? If you wanna, if you wanna make your cause known, this is the way to do it, okay? If you, if you go into popular areas, or any area, and, and you vandalize and, and, you, and, and, you, and you incriminate yourself, how do you expect the people to hear your cause? Let's, let's, be, let's be smart here, okay? So, um, I just want you guys to know that this is the right way to do things, okay? Uh, take notes. Um, I know things are, are tense right now in our country, but if we if keep things peaceful, as many leftists promote, then uh, on both ends, maybe we can come to some sort of solution rather than promoting violence, shitting on the people that, that are here and, and, and keeping our children safe at night, okay? Uh, 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 these are the people that, that are the reason that we can sleep at night, okay? And, 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 we, and we demonize them every day. And it's not fair to the police officers. It's not fair to people that are dying in the streets as well. But there's a better way to do things than to uh, kind of make people say, oh my God, see, how am I supposed to listen to somebody who's, who's, who's making their point across in a, in a non-peaceful way? And I, that's all I wanted to say. Can you explain? Because I wasn't here last week. Can you explain what happened with oh, this no, shop? I don't know or what restaurant? happened to this shop. Nothing happened to this restaurant. It's just an example because there was a lot of businesses in LA, various parts, that were damaged, and that's not fair. That's not fair to business owners, whether they're 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 people of color, whether they're white, whether they're gay. No matter what they are, that's not fair. So this is the right way to do things, and uh, I don't really have anything else to say. I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, it's fine. You guys here, you guys want to film. Some people may not like it, but just know. Uh, this is how to get all point across. That's all. Okay. Okay. Trying to wind our way over to the Chinese. At least I think she's Chinese. The lady who's been screaming stuff out about China and the coronavirus and where? Excuse me, are, are you with a news organization? Uh, no, we are social media. We're social media company. I'm, social media I'm, company. I'm live on YouTube. You, would you like to explain what brings you out here? Oh, yeah, because we, uh, we are from Hong Kong. Wait, wait, you're covering this. <laughs> I was trying to get a shot of the first sign, but all right. We are, there we go. We, we, we are from Hong Kong. Okay, and your enemy is the CCP. Okay. Yeah, our enemy and our sign. The CCP. I, I was yeah. born in the US. I and we are American. Kong, we are American. And, uh, Wait, one at a time. Two. There are two people uh, talking right now. Who first? Who first? And, then, uh, and then this is what happened. We had a. Democrats yeah. only plan. Uh, Trump takes actions. All right. Um, let me explain the sign. Yesterday, uh, Kamala Harris tried to lay out a plan and saying Trump didn't have any plan 
for uh, for uh, attacking uh, or, or overcome this uh, coronavirus stuff or CCP virus, China virus. But in fact, in fact, in fact, on January in uh, in uh, January 31st, Trump already called United Airlines, Delta, or and one another one to stop plane coming from China. And you, do you think that was the right decision? I think it's the right decision because we know what's going on. We know how bad the uh, this uh, CCP virus is. But most American, the people here. They, they have no idea. They still try to believe WHO. But back then, we already not trusting WHO. We know WHO already uh, is a corrupt with the CCP already. Look at Taiwan. What happened? They stopped anything going there from China. So Trump is doing his best based on what he got. The information what he got on January 31st, he stopped those flights. Except he allowing he is allowing American to come in or American or any family member still allowing them to come in, even though they go to, uh, they've been uh, China or uh, anywhere. Have you been back and forth between the U.S. and China? No. Do, no. do you have do, do you have relatives in in China? I have no relative. In, no no relative. Okay, so when uh, when you say that the we have the, information. the virus, I guess you call it the CCP virus. Yeah. Uh, when you say it's much worse than we realize, what is that based on? We yeah, have all the because what happened is I read Chinese. Okay. People in China, they do send out information. They still have people able to send out information to U.S. So we are able to gather those kind of information. Right, yeah. I'm so sorry. Huh? Well, I, I want to get to you next. <laughs> huh? but and then what happened is, I tried to finish explaining this. On January 31st, yes. Trump stopped. And then what happened is, based on only like 200 cases, Trump has to stop. Because he started to sense kind of like something wrong with the China information. He stopped it, but Biden called Trump xenophobic. At the same time, New York Times blamed Trump on the stock market because uh, on the stock market falling. <laughs> but in fact, he is based on the only 200 case. That's all he can do. And now, Democrats need to uh, need to uh, stop spinning spinning the news. Let it stop spinning the news. This is the fact. And how do we know what happened? Because we read both sides. We know how CCP wrote one version in English and in other version in Chinese. We know that. So what? What's one narrative? that the CCP puts out differently in English and in Chinese? Oh, a lot. Give me an different. example of one narrative. Right now? Right now? Oh, right over my head, I don't have the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the exact news. And, and, the, and because they, an example? They, they, they have the news. They have news. They have two versions. One version. One version for Chinese people. In Chinese, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the other version is in uh, English. What's one example of that with the virus? Oh, that, they, they, that they tell their two two versions of the same story. Yes. Um, they would say to um, China, to their inside people, to to their nation, uh, to the people inside, they would say we won't bow to the U.S. They will have to listen to us. But to the world, they will say don't don't make U.S. mad. They will come beat us. So they tell two different stories. What, what, what about with the virus, with the pandemic? What's an example of the, them having two different stories? They try. Oh, they, they have more than two stories. Okay. Uh, they have more than two stories. Yeah, any example. Okay. Um, they say 
so they, they have said they have said for the first round they have said it's from um, the US and back in the October 2019 the um, the military Olympics in Wuhan uh, the virus is from that US military brought the virus yes. to a facility in Wuhan that's, yes okay. that, that's when the military Olympics was going on in Wuhan uh, the city and they said that the virus is uh, already happening then from the and, US and to the world the, the CCP says what that's 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 what they said that's what they I, said. I mean and, and uh, I, I'm excuse I me, and, the, and I can send you the information if you give me. Uh, uh, let me try. Let me try. Uh, it's. Let me try. No worries. It's I'm all right. I not. think you're saying you're the different explanations of the origin of the virus. I, I get what you're they, right. They don't. Um, they don't tell the truth. The CCP won't. You're saying their the story truth. has changed about the origin of the they, virus. Oh, they have also said it's from Italy. For the first round. For the first round. That's uh, happening before this February. That's, they have this two stories going on. One's from uh, America, the other from Italy. Okay, now yes. I hear I hear you shouting out that the virus is a bioweapon. Yes. Please ex explain. Um, for for me, um, so we're all we all know that the trade war was going on. Uh, Trump has been talking about it ever since he comes up, and um, and then. Um, for us Chinese, we Hold know that got... the economy in China is very unstable, and uh, it's been going on for a few years now. That uh, they're losing jobs, the uh, factories are closing, they don't have enough money, and Trump's uh, trade deal will bring more pressure. And um, uh, what Trump wants is to want a fair game with China because all the companies in China is state owned and the and the companies that trading with uh, China in the US they are they're private companies so Trump wants them to open up basically Trump wants them to uh, to follow the rules that they agreed when they first thought the when they first start trading, um, America gave them some leeway about uh, the companies being transitioned from state-owned to private-owned throughout the years. So it's been ten something years now, and they still not following what they agree on. But what if it indeed, or if, if, if if the virus was a bioweapon, so what was that? They have to uh, pay tax to to the U.S. and then. China has been saying that it is an unfair deal. They won't yield, they won't bow, they won't pay the taxes. That's what they have been spreading the messages to the people inside China. So, but to me, I know the economic situation going on inside that they had to sign the trade deal with Trump. Otherwise they wouldn't, they wouldn't survive the collapse. They had to sign, they have to sign the trade deal with Trump to have orders come in, to have people produce, otherwise they won't survive this collapse that is to come. And why exactly, and in, the, in, this, know, in this picture, why exactly yes, was the bioweapon needed? Yes. Okay, so, and they, and I know that China has nothing to bring to the table because they broke all the rules that they, uh, they agreed that they were to comply, but they never did. They got nothing they had to sign. But to the to their to China, the people, they already said they won't bow. So on this side they bow, on the other side they revenge by releasing the virus to bring to to bring US down. That's we me as a Hong Kong um, American, I grew up in Hong Kong, I've been here for over twenty years. I knew in, in my gut that China won't sign it away without doing nothing. That's what I knew in my gut. But um, and then for for me to say that because I watched them do other stuff before, so um, I knew that they would do something. I wrote I wrote um, last year August 13 on my Facebook status saying um, if China wants to survive the economic collapse, they ha Trump was their savior. That's what I wrote um, because I had that unresolved knowing that China wouldn't comply. That's why I wrote that.
and I don't know how they're gonna, I don't know how it's gonna end, but with this coming back of the coronavirus, it kind of explains the story. It, to me, it's a complete story because we know what they are capable of doing. They would do it. They don't care about people dying. They, what they care is to bring U.S. down to their feet. That's what they care. And do you, do you also believe that Trump, uh, excuse me, China is trying to drive Trump out of office? Oh, of course, of course, because Trump has been poking them all along. And are you out here to support Trump as well yes. as to speak about? Okay. And yes, yes. As as a Chinese American, I have to tell America what I know. I have to tell America what I know. It's my job, and it's the voters uh, deserve to know all the details before they make choices, um, whether they choose left or right. We voters deserve to know all the details um, of um, all the all, all the things that will bring after whom we vote for to, to make education uh, educated uh, decisions. That's what I think. Sorry, I just pan, I panned away as a man reaches out his driver's side window with a middle finger and screaming, "You racist fucks!" Um, I'm here to cover the demonstration as well. You you don't think that uh, Biden can stand up to China, do you? No. Or do you? No, no. And why? Very consistently. Uh, first of all, first of all, Biden already said he would uh, cancel the tax, and then uh, secondly, the, the tariff. You mean the the tax, the tariffs, the tariffs. Okay. That's right, the tariffs. Secondly. Um, Paris is already passing laws to uh, to pr prosecute people who call the coronavirus Chinese virus, China virus, Wu flu, something like that. They, she is she is already passing laws on that. Thirdly, um, days ago, um, I think a Chinese uh, department, I don't know which one, but they said Biden is a softer uh, leader for China to deal with. That's what they say. So consistently, it's been giving us consistent messages that Biden would be a helper of China. And you're saying that's coming from internal yes. Chinese memos. Okay. Yes. Lastly, it's complicated. It'll probably take a while, but could you briefly explain your thoughts on the situation in Hong Kong with regard to the election in the U.S. right now? Um, Trump, what, what happened? I, I mean, how how uh, you think Trump's handling Hong Kong, and um, how you think Biden might handle Hong Kong? China is not only eating up Hong Kong, America; it already has eaten up Australia, Canada, Europe, um, Japan, Korea. Uh, many places have been infiltrated with the money, the CCP money. So, uh, American voters. What we are voting for not just affect America, the well-being, the safety of America, but the well-being and safety of the whole world. Uh, we having this. Well, isn't isn't Biden proposing stricter measures? For instance, Biden's calling for a mask mandate, and Trump is not. Um, I suggest uh, we all wear masks because it's it's a real weapon. Uh, people have a lot of. Uh, um, difficulties, you know, difficulties. A lot of sentiments about wearing masks. Um, don't look at what people say here about wearing masks because there are a lot of uh, things going on. Look at um, the countries surrounding China. Taiwan, Japan, Korea, Hong Kong. When this happened, they immediately all wear a mask because they had it before, they knew it. So we refer to the numbers there instead of here because they are over-reporting of the uh, coronavirus cases. We don't know. Uh, there are a lot of reports saying if um, pe people um, die or have symptoms of uh, TBs, they will be reported as coronavirus. So we don't know the numbers if they are true or not. Don't refer to those numbers. Refer to the numbers not of America, not of China, but to the surroundings, uh, surrounding countries of China, and we'll learn more. Okay, thank you very much. And what's your social media channel? Uh, Asia Sky Media.
Where do people find that? Uh, find us on Facebook, on YouTube, Asia Sky Media. We're located in Montebello, California. Asia Sky Media. Yes. Okay, thank you very much and best of luck. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for your time. All right, guys. I saw some of your comments. Not every day I run into someone from Hong Kong. At a, Josh Friedman. J O S H Friedman F R I E D M A N. Josh Friedman on on YouTube. We're live on YouTube. Wonderful. Josh Friedman. Josh Friedman. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Day. You can uh, come to my studio. I'll, I'll send you an email. Come to Thank my, so uh, come to my uh, studio and we can do an interview. Okay, sure. And we look into the Thank you. Oh, there's a fuck Donald's. <laughs> so, yeah, we've, we've got definitely some, some people driving by who have choice words for the pro Trump crowd here. And I guess when someone was making the point earlier that it, this is a diverse pro-Trump crowd, well, you've got a couple interesting characters over here. And yeah, I've... No, not that I'm the diversity police, but I've seen some different shades of pigmentation here. Uh, let's see, comments, comments, comments. I get the impression that... I'm live I'm live on my personal YouTube channel. My name is Josh Friedman. I'm live on the Josh Friedman Josh, channel. Josh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, were covered, we did the um, Hollywood March for the Save the Children last week. So I a few of our friends are doing the live stream. He just said you guys are doing the live stream for Trump. Uh, sorry guys. Okay, great to see you. You're welcome. Oh, that's a Trump, well, I should say a vehicle with American flags on it, but it seems to be giving support for Trump. Some people definitely honking in support. Some people making noise from their vehicles. Definitely not supportive of the pro-Trump crowd. I wasn't expecting so much of a geopolitical stream, but yeah, we. I'm seeing comments about Hong Kong, Tibet, elsewhere the woman from Hong Kong had a lot to say geopolitically oops didn't mean to zoom in sorry not still getting used to this phone by the way I started I launched this broadcast on a different stream and that went out after just a couple minutes. I it went out in the middle of an interview about what happened last week, but luckily I've been able to speak with multiple people during this broadcast and get two different sides or maybe a variety of perspectives, although mostly from pro-Trump people, on what happened here last week. And if you weren't tuned in earlier, these demonstrations have been going on here in Tahunga, right here along Foothill Boulevard for several weeks now, maybe even two months or so, like the one Black Lives Matter guy said. And things escalated last week. Unfortunately, we weren't here to document it, but the riot squad came out last week and things didn't end so peacefully. And during this broadcast, I've been trying to get people's perspectives on what happened last week. Across the street, demonstrators are gone. When we went over there about an hour ago, something like that, maybe less, there was a church group 
standing on the sidewalk that appeared to be, if not pro-Trump, then definitely sympathetic toward Trump and Trump supporters. And then there were two Black Lives Matter demonstrators over there, one of whom I did an interview with, and he talked a lot about what's been happening here over the past couple months from his perspective. If you can't understand, she's saying coronavirus is CCP by a weapon, all Chinese know. Yes, sir. Tomorrow Chinese, tomorrow Chinese we will be having another protest in the Chinese embassy in Los Angeles. That protest is going to be over what specifically? Or, or the reason for their yeah, protest? Yeah, yeah. They... Oh, they didn't say... They didn't say it's just a regular event that people regular. people protest outside the Chinese embassy. Oh, that's not the embassy, that's the consulate. But, uh, consulate. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, consulate. Probably, probably they, they, I will find out tomorrow. Well, I, you are I, expect, I expect to be at a Beverly Hills Trump rally tomorrow, oh. but we'll see what happens. Uh, we've got a lot of moving parts and something's changed, so I don't know. Uh, 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 this weekend, a lot of protests going on, right? All the time, a lot of protests going on. <laughs> Week, weekend, you name it. This, this is a year of protests. What was your YouTube channel? Josh Friedman, J O S H O S H space F R I E D M A N. Yeah, that one. And that's us right now. We're live. Oh no, that that was this this one right here. But that's my channel. That's my channel. Yeah. Oh, sorry guys. Uh, someone's got an interesting question. Here we go. Uh, maybe you can answer this question. A viewer is asking if the virus is going to go away by itself. Will the virus go away by itself? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, usually, usually when people when people say go away by itself, they're hold on a hold on a second. They're 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 usually implying that. The virus would go away without there being a vaccine or without there being some treatment that's introduced. Uh, you okay. Maybe. I'll, I'll pose her the question. What? One more question from the audience yes, yes. That, that I think is an interesting question. Yes. Someone's asking, will the virus go away by itself? And usually, when people ask that, they're they're implying that a vaccine or a treatment may or may not be needed. I, I think we'll uh, rely on the uh, science and technology development to hopefully overcome this uh, for us right now. I don't know. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know the answer of that. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Neither do I. Let's see what other comments and questions popped up. Thank you, thank you, Father, thank you, Father God, thank you, Father God, amen. Thank you. Quite, quite the crowd out here. Responsibility. It's the responsibility of an American, of a responsible person, of a voter to know. Kushner's testing plan? I haven't kept up with Kushner's testing plan. <laughs> All lives matter sign. Anyway, moments ago I was I was recapping what we've garnered today about counter protests. Excuse me, counter protesters here this week and last week and. This week and last week, there's quite the contrast. As you've heard already, they're 
there were some serious clashes here last week. This week, or today, we ran into two counter protesters across the street who weren't very loud and definitely weren't agitating. And we had an interview with one of them. Can you can you hold the, the phone for a second? Yes. I've got, briefly got to respond to to a few work messages, so Annabelle's going to hold the camera for a couple minutes. Okay. Oh, do you want to promote your um, new channel on our channel right now? Yes. Uh, okay, that's fine. okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, if you guys are familiar with the Save the Children March that occurred last week in Hollywood, um, a lot of collective efforts were going on with different groups. Ours happens to be Break the Cycle, Save a Child. So we are actually organically um, putting everything together for more information on one single platform because the marches are great, guys, but we really need to take the next step to actions and get plugged into um, really good vetted organizations that already have a great platform for us to actually move um, in ending trafficking. So, so if you guys want to go to our website, um, it's going to be up pretty soon, but for right now the Instagram is Break the Cycle, Save a Child under that banner, as well as Leave the Kids Movement at Gmail if you have any questions for us. Okay, and you will be in Beverly Hills tomorrow? Uh, yes, we're going to be, well, I'm going to be in Beverly Hills. I don't know if anybody else is, but yes, bring your questions and any concerns, and we'll try to get you plugged into your respective cities. Okay, thank you thank so you. much. <laughs> okay, guys, I will be in another rally in Beverly Hills tomorrow. Let's see. What else? Uh -huh. Okay, one woman said fuck you, and the other guy said fuck you. Uh oh. Okay, hello. Okay, yeah, Josh already, already did an interview with that lady. Um, yeah, she says the coronavirus or COVID SARS 2 is a bioweapon, as a lot of police officers are still here. I'm um, no Antifa today, and we only met two Black Lives Matter supporters. But yeah, as you can see, still lots of police. Here's a banner. Okay, let's walk through here. Country music. Chum, chum, chum. Yeah, here you can buy some shirts. Yeah, let's just listen to some music. Yeah, so it doesn't look like that, that Antifa is going to show up. Where's Josh? Oh, there he is. Oh, he's on the phone. Okay. I don't know if there was another guy I want to interview, but he left, I think. Okay, they are talking to the police. We want to talk to a supervisor, but I think he was not allowed to give an interview. Let's see. Yes, here. Video taper. Do you have something to share? I have absolutely nothing to share. Get away from it. Okay, so... I remember that bear meatball. They don't have anything to share. They asked me to get away from them. Okay, I'm good. Hey, hey, magic monkey, I'm good. Yeah, that guy was just putting his hand in front of the camera. As I asked him if he has something to share, he said, no, I don't. And, yeah. Okay, let's just check out the police. No, we haven't entered flu season, but everybody is wearing a mask. So yeah, as you can see here, lots of, not many, I would say maybe 60 protesters remaining. Oh. Yeah, apparently he wants to be private and public. Uh, he's still on camera, that's okay. Because those are the only people who are left here. 
Maybe we go to the Chinese lady. She likes to talk. So yeah, we are here in the parking lot. Basically. So. And there are people playing music. Earlier, somebody told us that Antifa will show up later there where the pet smart is, but I don't think so. Oh, I saw that guy earlier. Maybe I'm going to report him and ask him if he wants to pop on camera and wants to say what brought him out here today. Hey, do you want to? Hop on and say what brought, brings you out here today. You know, no, I don't. Yeah. Can I just record your yeah. Trump sign? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Okay. okay. Yes, we got that. Thank you. You're okay, so it looks like this here. Here's police. There's a tent, and they are selling t shirts over there. Earlier there were other protesters on that side, but it's empty. Oh yeah, and the pet smart is here, but I don't think Antifa is going to show up here. But we will see. Oh. Yeah, earlier there was a lady in a wheelchair and she also told us, I don't know, she told us we are a spy. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's really weird why the people come in public area and then they don't want to be filmed. Well, oh, that's what I can tell you. Tomorrow in Berlin there will be a massive protest in Berlin and Germany against the coronavirus dictatorship, how they call it. And the German Senate allowed them now to go out and protest and they don't have to wear masks in Germany. So no mask mandate because they are worried that Antifa is going to show up. And they don't, yeah, they, I mean the entire protest is against um, the coronavirus dictatorship. So Berlin wants to make a revolution about that. Hi. Um, just like a tip, because I know like, uh, so like sidewalks, are, it's totally cool to film, but like just so you don't get in trouble if no one says anything, because like the parking lot is like private property, so just so you like, like, um, just so you don't get in trouble, so you want to stay on the sidewalk. Like, just okay. Tip. Yeah, because I've, I've heard, so like, on uh, public property, you're totally cool, but like, I don't want you to get in trouble. And stuff. Sure. Which, what is the, um, what is this, where, where, what, what's going on? Wait. Oh, um, I was saying because like so whenever you film stuff wait, like the uh, sidewalks is public property. So besides are, your name, who do you guys work with? Nobody. 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 No. No. Independent. So, I, I, I so Josh works like, for Calco's News. Okay. Um. Yeah. That's in San Luis Obispo, and he writes for them. Oh, he does. So if you want to write that down, Calco's News. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. So and sometimes he uses a live stream. There's no expectation of privacy. Yeah, I'm not on social media very much. Right. However, I just came across it. They can ask you know, us to step off of this, this parking lot area and onto the street, but there's no, there's no extra. Not all the time. We were also in Seattle and in Portland. Are you guys going all the way? Yeah, and yesterday we were in San Luis Obispo. Oh, so you guys are all over? Yes. I mean, we are not in Washington, D.C. right now, unfortunately, but... Okay, or Atlanta. There was a big bus out there, so that was in Utah. Okay, so you guys go all over the place. Under your two names. I, I understand, but there's no legally there's no expectation of privacy right here. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, uh, just so you guys like don't get in trouble. Okay. Okay. Bye. okay. I'll, I'll be back on in. All right. Thirty seconds. Yeah, big protest tomorrow. There was another protest in Berlin on August 2nd, I guess. And the first the police said there were, I don't know, 20,000 people. Then the police said there were 800,000 people. Then they said there were 1.3 million people. And I guess tomorrow will be also over 100,000. Yeah, 100, 
of people in Berlin. So maybe you want to check that out. Just Google Berlin demonstration. They they don't call it protest. They call it demonstra demonstration. Berlin protest tomorrow against the coronavirus dictatorship. Yeah, Berlin had enough. But you know, when the people demonstrate or protest in Germany, it's different. They actually have a real cause what they are after. They just don't want to have a lockdown anymore. They don't want to be forced to wear masks. They don't want that their children grew up um, going to school on Zoom, you know. They think it's really important that uh, children know facial expressions and are allowed to be close to each other, the whole thing. Yes, I am German. I am from Hamburg. Let's see. Hi. I'm taking over the camera now. Any questions? Hooray for Germany. I hope they get that done. But you know, the Chinese lady said that you know the coronavirus is a dangerous bioweapon, so we should wear masks. But I don't know. I can't breathe with masks because it's mostly 100 degrees here in Los Angeles, and it's incredibly hot. So, I, oops, sorry. So I can't wear masks. And I'm, I'm a healthy human being. Yeah, San Pauli, that's where I went out as I was 16, 17, 18, and it was awesome. Awesome use over there. Now it changed a little bit because they're, they're dealing with a lot of immigrants. And they are mostly Muslim and they don't like when women dress up sexy. And then they think they can just attack them. Okay, Josh is back. Yeah. Yeah, you know that Angela Merkel. Oh, so, okay, here, yeah, Josh. Oh, now you, you can, can take can, over. You can finish that thought. No, saying. Angela Merkel just left a lot of immigrants, and then the Germans don't like her. Be yeah. Okay, that's that's that's, enough. that's your opinion. That's not my reporting. Uh, but uh, she did welcome many migrants into Germany. Are we are we fully charged on this broadcast? Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, it's a phone charge. Yeah, it's I, I can pull it out. Can you. Okay, guys. Uh, what did I miss? Other than oh, that a little the one guy was attacking you. Oh no, he didn't. Someone want to was attacking. No, he didn't attack me. You know, he just put his hand in front of the camera. Well, I was gonna bring it up at the end, but I guess might as well bring it up now. It's. It seems like whether it's left or right, we run into people not respecting the right to film in public Maybe not, turn and we not, have res not, res us. not respecting the first amendment and press freedom i can understand though why they're they're suspicious of people especially given what happened here last week i can definitely understand that but we're allowed to film here it's a protest someone says free Someone says free speech is dead. Well, not quite, but quite often over the past few months, I've found various aspects of the First Amendment being trampled on in various parts of the country. I'm scrolling through some of your comments, but doesn't look like they're too oriented toward this protest to <laughs> a rally maybe now I asked I asked a lot earlier officer is there a supervising officer present who could speak with the press, the press? yes oh uh, over here Sir, the one with the 
right there. By yes, the yes, yes, I do. Thank you very much. Things have calmed down here. Oh, we have someone. What is that sign stay across the street? Something strong. Oh, Trump. Trump is strong. Is that an is? Trump. Trump. Oh, Trump P.S. Stinky. A Trump Stinky. Okay, we got a counter protester across the street, I think. I guess that's a total of three. Excuse me, officer. I was told that there's a supervising officer here who might be able to speak with the press. One of these, these are the supervisors. Guys with the bars. Okay, thank you. Yeah, like you say, they know they're, they're not gonna... Hi, officer. My name is Josh Friedman. I'm with Calcos News, and I'm doing a YouTube live stream at the moment. Is is there an officer who can speak with the press? Sergeant. Right oh, Sergeant, right here. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Let's see. Maybe we can get an interview. He's sergeants having a conversation with a couple people. Let's wait and see if we can speak with them. The numbers seem to be dwindling. Not that large of a crowd remains. We do have one, it appears we have one counter protester across the street. Not a scene that would typically bring out a line of officers in riot gear, but given what happened last week, I guess it's no surprise. Let's, as I wait for this sergeant, let's take a look at the chat. Joey, I'm trying. I'm going to try to speak with a sergeant. Next? Possibly downtown. I don't know if there's any action there tonight, though. I don't know. We need to figure out what's going on if there's any action there. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure the officers behind us know. <laughs> they won't tell us. Uh, that, that's up to me to figure out, I guess. They won't tell you. Can you... Yeah. Can you check for any any LA protest streams or Twitter fly to, action? Fly to Washington. There's a lot of action over there right now. Yeah, but there are how many people there on the scene covering it? Like, how, a lot. How, how, how many reporters are here right now? Just you. And how many reporters are in Washington? Uh, 200 so, probably at least. I'm, fill, I'm filling my role. No, there's a group that are actually in different spots. It's funny. I don't know what they're called. I've been watching the last few days. One is in Portland, the other one is in, uh, what is that city, the uh, recent one, uh, Kenosha. Kenosha, yes, yeah, DC, and they're all, they're all have it on the same screen, they have the small ones, and then they yes. give, I don't know what they're when called. they share several live streams. I, I think they're Antifa, I think so, I think they're BLM. They're, they're wait, wait, I want to speak with the sergeant. Yeah, they're connected, each. they're all uh, one group doing it. There are live streamers all around the country in different yes, cities, and right, right now, because this March on Washington is a very popular event, many live streamers are traveling from as far away as Seattle right. to course, Washington. Right. So are you helping? Uh, are you helping us to have a Trump win? That's my question to you. Are you helping us to help Trump? I'm, I'm out here documenting. Right? That's all you're doing. I don't know whether it helps. You're on no side. I don't know whether it helps or hurt. Well, you can look at my channel. It's, Which side are you on? I, I, Tell me, which side are you on? You should be on some I'm, I'm side. I'm trying to get a, an interview with the sergeant. So I'm, not, I'm not violent. Which side no, no, are you I on? don't. I, I, I literally, I, I've told people, I'm not voting. I'm not, oh, you are not. I, I'm not voting for, I'm not registered to vote. I'm not voting for president. If you my, were registered I, to look, vote. Look, I, I vote. I vote with my reporting. I vote with my with my dollars. I, right. 
I vote with my my flights, my travel, my feet, okay. etc. I mean, that, that's, those, that's those are my enough. those are my contributions. To the city. Yes, I. Sir, Sergeant, my name is Josh Friedman. I report for Calpus News, and I'm doing a YouTube live stream at the okay. moment. Would you be able to give a quick comment about LAPD's policing of the situation here? Sure. Could we step over maybe right to this? Side? Thank you very much. Did he throw me under the bus? Not, that guy? As, not as far as I okay, know, good. but but I see you guys maybe cracking some jokes. So I don't yeah, know what I, I missed. I think he's throwing me under the bus. I don't know what I missed on you. Are, you're uh, Sar Sergeant. Yes, Sergeant Sar Ingram. Sergeant Ingram. Yes, sir. And uh, which division are you with? I'm a watch commander of Foothill Division. Okay. Uh, Sergeant, can you speak to us a little bit about LAPD's policing of the rallies here in Tahunga, right here on Foothill Boulevard? As far as what? L let's start with last week. Can, can you can you run through what happened last week? So this has been going on for uh, several months now, since June. And uh, each week, uh, we have more and more people come out from the Trump support side. And then we have counter protesters who show up on the other side. Um, last week, it escalated. Um, and we basically got surrounded. We declared an unlawful, unlawful assembly because uh, both sides were throwing um, rocks, bottles, projectiles at each other, including at us, and uh, we dispersed everyone. No arrests were made during that. Uh, so this week we kind of ramped up the visual uh, presence of the police department and took a more proactive uh, posture and a stance here. And it's been very peaceful, very, very quiet. It's actually very good turnout. Um, the counter protesters didn't show up today, uh, but I'm confident that if they did show up, it still would have been peaceful. We have a really good line of communication with those folks, the organizers from both sides. And we just want to make sure that everyone uh, has their ex they exercise their First Amendment right safely, peacefully. And at the end of the day, they go home and, and handle their Friday night. Even with the counter protester side, I think we both know that they tend to be quite anti-police. Correct. You, you have a strong line of communication with them? Absolutely. L last week, uh, I, I was not here last week. You're saying that the, the counter protesters were on the other side and the pro Trump or yes. the Trump supporters were right here and they were both throwing at each other. objects at each other? Yeah, so, so it started when someone on the counter protester side threw an object on the Trump side and then they both started throwing stuff back and forth. So at that point, our officers, we, de I, we declared an unlawful assembly and dispersed everyone. We dispersed the Trump folks first. Uh, and then we dispersed uh, the, the counter side after. And some footage has emerged. I, I think uh, there's footage of officers firing some sort of uh, uh, less lethal projectile. Le less lethal yes. projectile, sure. Could you explain what happened with that incident? Uh, well, it happened for a couple minutes. Uh, officers were defending themselves from being attacked with projectiles, and they fired less lethal munitions at target specific uh, people that were. Uh, throwing projectiles and, and doing violent things, violent acts on, on, on not only on officers, but also, you know, on, on civilians. And um, as, uh, as soon as we declared the unlawful assembly, it was fine. We set up our skirmish lines and, and then it became peaceful. It was over. Were those rubber bullets, foam uh, projectiles? What, what was A mixture of uh, beanbag rounds and then foam, foam, uh, foam rounds. And do you know if any struck individuals? There were several people that got struck. I don't know the, the number, but there were several people that got struck. Do you know which side, or was it a mixture of bo both sides? I don't know, sir. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, we get some some people scream, yeah. screaming at us yeah. as we're going by, but no, it's it's a uh, it's been very peaceful it today. Has. It's great. Would uh, there's there's some criticism coming from uh, the counter protester side that I've seen online sure. of them saying that last week police were, in their words, protecting the pro-Trump side and were only focusing their attention on the counter protester side. What would your response be to that? Well, we take a neutral, unbiased uh, stance, objective. Um, but I will tell you last week, the folks on the north side of the street here we're not attacking us. Uh, and that the, that's the side we're on right now, the, the pro-Trump side. Yeah. So when it comes down to it, the officers are going to react as human beings and focus their attention on the people that are attacking them. And that happened to be on the south side. Now, we got completely surrounded. Um, so at the end of the day, it was it was very, very fearful. And we're, we, you know, we, we don't know where they were coming from. Um, but I was here in the middle of the street talking to the organizer on both sides, that side, this side, trying to establish law and order, trying to establish peace, 
uh, having very good conversations with them. And, um, you know, unfortunately, it was out of their hands too. So, you know, we tried to, uh, to, to squash things as best as we could without having to use force. Take care. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we can't control everyone. I don't know if we have kids. I have kids, and sometimes I can't control the kids. So, you know, it, uh, we do our best, and but that's you, what we do. But you're saying that there, there were individuals attacking officers safe, on, on the counter protester side but not not on this side Correct. the pro-trump side yeah i didn't see anyone on this trump side or pro-trump side whatever we want to call it um attacking officers uh you know that's that's what, what i've seen what, in what about in weeks past were, were there clashes between right right here between uh, the pro-trump side and the counter protesters yes that's why, that's prior why prior to last week yes yes uh this fight and that, that kind of stuff do you, do you see the the tension subsiding now, or are you expecting to have to bring out the the officers in riot gear on a weekly basis? They actually don't have riot gear on. Um, they have helmets on. Uh, they, they use these helmets to respond to armed calls, armed calls for service, um, or somewhere there's an active shooter or something. So I just want to get that out there. They're not in riot gear. They have a helmet on. But they don't have tactical vests on. They don't have pads on. They don't have big shields out here. That's riot gear. So they're out here. Uh, with helmets on because last week there were rocks that were being projected at us. Um, there were bricks, there were pipes, there were all, all kinds of dangerous weapons that were being thrown at us. So the last thing I wanted to have is a police officer or anyone, you or anyone on this side um, or that side that gets hit in the head and is now dead or seriously, you know, seriously injured because someone decided to throw a rock, pick up a rock from the grass over there and throw it over here. So, at my direction, they have helmets on um, to protect themselves from any any projectiles, and that's pretty much it. We can take a different approach, which is what we did a couple weeks ago, and not have any officers here. But what did that do? It basically allowed both sides to get in a little brawl in the middle of the street. We can't have that either. So we're trying to find a happy medium with the folks on the north side, the folks on the south side, to see exactly what our approach can be and what our, our strategies are. It's an ongoing thing. We're learning every single week because it changes. The do you, tactics change. Do you think that having the officers here today, and I, 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 based on what I'm hearing sure. from you, it sounds like you let the, the opposing side know that you would have their presence here today ahead of time. Yes. Do, do you think that's a deterrent toward them coming out here? No. Or, not, or did they not show up they, for a different reasons? They, they reached out to us, and uh, we have a really good line of communication with them. We've had meetings all week with them. And they basically decided because of the... the the, uh, the melee last week, but they weren't going to participate this week because because of what happened. So the, the organizers uh, from ABRA, from BLM, they're very, very uh, easy to talk to, and we have a very good relationship with them. And they basically uh, said, hey, we're not going to be there. We're not going to you know, uh, submit to the nonsense again. Well, maybe we'll be there next week, but we're not going to come today. Um, I actually met with one of the organizers today for a couple hours. He showed up. and. Uh, it was great. It was a great. One meeting. of the organizers from which group? From uh, the opposing side. I'm not going to give his okay, name. Well, right all now, right, but you, you did just say Abra, which is a, a local group. Yes. And he's not from Abra. And uh, BLM likewise. So all right, I I, I understand now. That was going to be my next yeah. question. That you are, you are speaking with members of actual yes. groups yes. that come 100%, out here. Yes. Okay. So, and that's the biggest thing is is we got to establish relationships with with folks you know on both sides and. And just let them know that our job is to, to be here to protect them. Do you, you know, to peacefully assemble and, and exercise their First Amendment right? Do you know if instigators on uh, on that side last week were members of ABRA or BLM or? I don't think they were. I don't think they were. Uh, and that's just based on my my experience and my. my did they have affiliation with with any other group? I don't know, but I do know that uh, that, the, that the organizers from ABRA and BLM were trying tirelessly to help us uh, by controlling that side and those agitators, and they just couldn't do it. For example, um, some members of, uh, I don't know if it was ABRA or BLM, they put up cones on their own. They put up uh, caution tape to keep everyone on the side so they didn't get hurt by a car. And as soon as they did that, uh, someone came up with a helmet on, a backpack, a uh, tactical vest. Um, I don't know who he was, and he ripped it all down and was starting to stir up the pot, if you, if you want to lack a better term. There's, the, granted, it's a very decentralized group, and maybe even calling it a group is not the correct sure. term, but there are 
Antifa, for instance, and uh, are you aware of Antifa presence here yes. last week? Was, yes. And were instigators, do you believe they were part of Antifa? I don't know because I didn't identify them. Okay. Without someone telling me they're Antifa, uh, I, I have no way to identify them. And at my level, I'm not getting in the mix with, uh, with the line level, you know, I'm kind of overseeing the operations. So I'm talking directly to the organizers, and one of the organizers uh, is not with Antifa, so I don't, I don't know who they were. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add about the situation? I just want to say thanks for being out here and covering this. It's awesome to see an uh, independent journalist. I, I report for Calcos News, okay. and I'm live streaming awesome. on my YouTube channel. So right thank now. you for coming out here and, and uh, you know and covering this, and we appreciate it. And hopefully you got what you want. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very thank you very much for answering no the problem. questions. No Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good luck to you guys. Yeah. All right. This is Officer Ingram. Sergeant Ingram. Oh, Sergeant Ingram. Sergeant Ingram. All right. Take care, guys. Thank Be you. safe. Okay. Okay. That was Sergeant Ingram, and he had a lot to say. So thank you very much to Sergeant Ingram for giving us time and answering the questions. Actually, I need to plug back in. And Abra, by the way, I forget what it's an acronym for, but Abra is uh, yeah we're sorry i'm searching for the cable i don't know oh it's in my pocket uh abra is a local group i i'm not super familiar with it you can google it and I, they're on twitter but i i believe there's something along the lines of a group here in the crescenta valley area that counters fascists and maybe right-wingers. I, I need to look into them, but I, I know they've been active out here. And the officers, you too, uh, officers now taking off. So uh, from Sergeant Ingram, I, I learned some things I was surprised to hear. I wasn't expecting to hear that LAPD is in close contact with local BLM and local Abra. Can, can you pull it up? Where's the phone? Let's let's pull it up on Twitter. They've got a Twitter account. I forget what Abra is an acronym for. I'm gonna pull this up so I can give you guys the proper name of Abra. But it sounds like Sergeant Ingram is, there we go, ABRA, ABRA stands for Against Bigotry Responding with Action. And they have a local ABRA foothill, foothills group in the Sunland and Tahunga area. And that's where we are right now, we're in Tahunga. So that's A B R A Abra. And on their Twitter feed, it says hashtag Black Lives Matter. So it sounds like the officers here have made it clear that on the counter protester side, which is right over there. Local Black Lives Matter has been active, local Abra has been active, and local Antifa has been active. And if I were to read between the lines from my interview with Sergeant Ingram, it sounds like LAPD is somewhat pointing the blame at Antifa and not at Abra and not at BLM although it's unclear who exactly the individual instigators were last week. All right, let's, let's take a little walk just to show what's left of the demonstration, which is basically nothing at this point. So I can bring Annabelle back on and we can wrap up the stream. Although there is, there's one person across the street with a Trump Trump PS stinky or is it Trump is stinky I'm not sure which but it looks like a counter protester and 
I'd be glad to conduct an interview, but that's about a five to ten minute walk when it includes <laughs> waiting for the traffic light to turn and getting looping back around there. So we're going to skip out on that interview because I've already interviewed someone on that side and we don't have a direct path across the street. Annabelle? Yes, I'm here. Let's wrap this up. Your, your thoughts on what you saw today. So there were mostly Trump supporters on one side, about a hundred, I would say. Um, He's upset because we don't have the window. Three open. counter protesters, um, two left already, and yeah, as Josh said, this is the last guy left. What I experienced today. Although, wait, now there's oh. some action over at In N Out. What's going on at In N Out? We'll monitor and give you a shot at what's going on in and out as, as we continue on. So let's let's just hold the phone right here and keep going, Annabelle. Okay, so yeah, I, I encountered a lot of people who didn't want to be filmed and I mostly, that was from the BLM side in my experience, but yeah, here were a lot of people who told me not to film, I'm not allowed to film, one of them put the hand in my in front of my lens so yeah likewise i i encountered some of those sentiments as soon as i arrived here there was someone trying very hard to dissuade me from filming being quite aggressive about that i think he later on apologized for that yeah, so that's i mean i guess the apology was nice yeah but what is they going said on here? that we are either spies or... Yeah. I have nothing to do with any of this shit. I know, I know. We're here to protect everyone's... Well, yeah, I know. So you have your own rights. I know, you go talk to the manager who I normally shop with, not this guy I don't know what's going on here. Oh, okay, okay. You can put on the nice tone, but you're the one being the dick. All right. Oh, good. <laughs> Would you mind ex explaining, S Sergeant Ingram, really quickly what's happening at the In-N-Out? In-N-Out closed their window, their walk-up window, about four or five hours ago uh -huh. to prevent people from blocking the driveway, which is what happened last week. So they're willing to, to, to shut down their business, half of their business, which is their walk-up service, in order to make it a more peaceful protest for everyone, which is very honorable for them to do. And uh, according to the In-N-Out manager, which is, he's the regional manager, so he has several In-N-Outs all over Southern California that he can manages. Um, he told this gentleman who was the window to leave, and he didn't want to leave, so he's creating a problem. So we just went over, asked him to leave, and as you can see, he left. What, do you know if this has anything to do with politics, or he's just no, frustrated he about just the... Burger. Okay. He doesn't want to wait in line. All right. The drive and yeah. then there is a bit of a there traffic pileup. There is a very big yeah. Okay. So under... Once we get the street open, it's all back to normal. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much again, yeah. Sergeant Ingram. Good luck to you guys. Take thank care. you. That's... <laughs> Much ado about nothing, maybe. Okay. Yeah, so the protesters called us spies. They called us Antifa. Well, they, these weren't, these, to use the correct terminology, they, they weren't necessarily protesters. They were, they were having a rally. Uh, they were Trump supporters, okay, I guess. The Trump supporters who lined up here today. There was one lady in a wheelchair. She called us spies. Yeah, she was filming us, and we were filming her. I guess all I've got to say about that is so be it. But no, I already made the point that this, the pressure being applied on the First Amendment is. Oops, sorry. Yeah, I really struggle with sorry. your Zoom feature as well. I don't How think people. I don't oh. think people like my eyes that much. Uh, yeah, it's pressure being applied on the First Amendment is not solely coming from the left. Here's it's also coming from the right. But what I, I would like to say is that I'm very, I'm very pleased that today, even though the, the counter protester crowd was not there, other than two, I guess three people now, when you include the one man out. You know, let's walk, maybe we can, no, I just want to wrap up the stream. I don't want to bother to walk over there and get an interview with him. 
I was very pleased, despite there not being a counter protester crowd today, I was pleased that we were able to get comments and interviews with lots of people on the Trump side. We were able to walk across the street and determine that indeed there were counter protesters when it didn't look like there were any. Granted, there weren't many. At the time, there were just two. And I guess now there's one more, it appears. But we were able to get a long interview with one of the counter protesters, giving, giving his perspective and and uh, his thoughts on what's been happening here, right here for that matter, over the past two months. And then Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Ingram, is he in the Foothill Division? I forget, but stop playing around it. Uh, uh, is it the Foothill Division? I forget. But anyway, Sergeant Ingram of LAPD graciously answered all our questions and really went into detail about what policing actions happened, specifically what happened last week, uh, what munitions were fired, and who uh, LAPD's been able to pinpoint as far as the instigating that's been going on. And I think that was flashing lights at us. Uh, and. Um, Oh, and also which groups LAPD is in contact with. And I found that to be quite interesting that LAPD is in contact with the local BLM group. Is it, is it in So they want to stop it, us filming. No, they're not. I, I don't know what the guy's doing. They're in, LAPD's... Okay, now they are... Tra yeah, this is intentional. Someone's screaming, go the fuck home. All right. Uh, so once again, so, some people here are very respectful, even appreciative. Some people want to give interviews and some people here on the Trump side are not so respectful of the First Amendment and the right of the press to be here filming in public. <sighs> anyway, sorry about that guys, the, the, the feed cut out just momentarily. As I was saying, some, some people here on the Trump side I would say many people on the Trump side are are being very respectful, many of whom are giving interviews, having conversations with us, and then some people, I presume like this man driving the truck who's flying the lights directly at the camera to, to try to prevent us from filming as someone screams out, go the fuck home. Some people are not being so respectful of the First Amendment and the right of the press or anyone for that matter to film in public. Nonetheless, I'm, I'm very grateful that, as I said, we came out here, we got comments from all sides, we got comment from the pro-Trump side, we got comment from the BLM side, as small as it was today, and we got comment from the police, and I think now if someone watched the broadcast in totality, even though unfortunately we weren't here last week and we haven't been here over the past couple months, I think this gives viewers a better perspective of what's going on here in Tahunga, specifically on Friday afternoons and evenings on Foothill Boulevard by Lowell Avenue and right outside in and out Burger. Any final comments, Annabelle? Any final comments? I think these people just waited until the police is gone and now, you know, they want to bully us a little bit. So, if that's the case, then I guess we'll just keep the stream on as we walk on out of here. So be it. I, this is the truck that was shining lights at us. Why? I don't know why. Oh, now it seems like this truck might oh, they are following us. fall. Oh, there, there go the lights again. So yeah, as as soon as LAPD leaves, this this truck is flashing lights directly at us. So we're gonna keep this stream on. 
I was ready to end the stream, but as we walk, we're gonna keep the stream on. G-Boy is saying, Josh, do not forget there are a lot of anti-Semites out there. Uh, that may or may not be the case. There are also Jews. There were Jews in the crowd today on the Trump side. People holding a, a, I saw a Jews for Trump flag or sign and multiple people saying they're Jewish. And the, look, I'm not regarding to someone saying stand there and defend the First Amendment. I'm I'm not here to antagonize. I, I'm not here to just get in a fight with someone. If I'm in the middle of reporting news, then I'm gonna try to stand my ground to the best of my ability. Oh, that was that was yeah. the lady who called yeah, a spy. Yeah. Whatever. So it's just it's kind of laughable. There yes. there are a lot of members of this crowd who seem to be very happy to speak to us. And there are quite a few members of this crowd who maybe I shouldn't even say quite maybe I shouldn't say quite a few, but there there's some members of this crowd who have been trying to run us on out of here. Probably just a handful. And then there have been some in between. Some with whom we had some healthy debate over where we can and cannot film. Uh, really could be under the light and just wrap it up. Why? Let's just... Oh, it's... it's We're about to head out of here. Thank you, G-Boy. Actually, all as we prepare to just get out of here, I will take a look at your comments. No, we're not both German. I am not German. Uh, tertiary, I always... Uh, I always want to laugh or feel like I'm getting trolled when I say your name. Uh, tertiary is saying that, what was he saying? It inverted, what'd you call it? It was an interesting comment. We're headed for inverted totalitarianism. It's an interesting way to put it. There's definitely pressure being applied on the Constitution, Bill of Rights, Civil Liberties from a lot of different angles. Why don't you get in? Cheers! I'm not done. Uh, Joey, you know what uh, what Annabelle pointed out? Not not that I go running to the police when someone harasses me, but what Annabelle pointed out, which I wasn't thinking of at first, is that the the person in the truck started flashing those lights, bright lights directly at us. And someone started screaming, get the fuck out of here, or something along those lines. They started doing that right after the police left. So the police are already on out of here. And Annabelle pointed out that that harassment started right after the police left. And she's correct. Not that I'd go running to the police. Anyway. Nonetheless, we're, we're now in the car and... About to head on out of here. Why don't you hold this and say choose? Choose. Okay. Or no, you know what? Oh, just leave, leave it on. For, okay. Just in case getting out of here is problematic, just leave it on for a minute as we drive on out of here. Not that they are following us. 
I don't think so. I would just think that they were just waiting until the police leaves and then they can bully us a little bit. traffic at in and out that was kind of funny and I guess um, oh, sorry. It, it goes to show that sergeant Ingram was very friendly and made himself very available with the press granted there weren't a whole lot of press out there pretty much us that's it um, given that he even explains the in and out situation to us <laughs> Usually, usually police aren't explaining some minor little arguments like like that at a protest to me. Uh, often I don't get any comment whatsoever from the police. More often than not, actually. Yeah, but he explained his entire situation, what happened last week. And that they are not um, wearing riot gear, actually. They are just having helmets on. Uh, yeah, I guess by LAPD definition, that's not riot gear. I get his point, but I, I think in the eye of the public, that's, I would say a lot of people would view that as riot gear, but I'm not going to, semantics, I'm not going to argue over it. Anyway, we can wrap up the stream now. Let's figure out, I guess I'm talking to Annabelle here, let's figure out if anything's going on downtown downtown LA that is I guess we just crossed the line from from Glendale to from LA to Glendale I guess we're in the city of Glendale right now but maybe there's some action downtown Los Angeles tonight if we have the energy for that maybe not probably there will be action in Beverly Hills tomorrow though we need to confirm that anyway as for now just stay tuned to the channel we will be live and on the ground in the Los Angeles area, at least for now. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you in an upcoming broadcast. Thanks a lot for tuning in and for for participating, and goodbye, I guess, from Glendale at the moment. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. End it.